Here is the there's our first 15. You'll see that Robert Preston and Greg Sachs actually tied for that second spot. Preston got it by the bases. He had more points than get, did Greg Sachs. And there's our second 15 starters. And some good names back there in that second group, too, Benny. There you see Earnhardt, as we mentioned earlier. He's starting back in 20th position. Rick Mast always runs good on this racetrack. And there are your four provisionals at the end. Derek Coke, John and Reddy, Michael Walker, and Jeff Bodine. Who runs this racetrack as well as anyone Jeff Bodine I'm talking about? We have in-car cameras and off-car cameras, and we have cameras everywhere for this event. Here's the foot cam that will be on Kyle Petty's car. You can be able to see him get on and off the accelerator and on and off the brake. There's the regular in-car camera for Kyle Petty. Here's the suspension cam, and we will be able to see the brake rotors glow when they heat them up during the event. We have several face cams also. There you're taking a look at Michael Walter as he gets set to go. And the roof cam on John Andretti's Kmart Little Caesars Pizza Ford. They're drying the track a little bit because of the showers that we had earlier in the day and we're not quite ready for a green flag. So we'll take another break and be back with more of the Haynes 500. Turn off the lights, Ralph. Are you going to play the Earnhardt thing, though? That was my major question. I mean, it's only applicable today. Okay. And then you'll fade to black, and then we'll just come up and say we're racing and we've raced so many laps. Okay, I got you. <laughs> Water back there. Right, right, right. See, Mikey, it's amazing, isn't it, Hal? I know everything that you've done. Why you do everything. Yeah. <laughs> Race car. Yahoo. Yeah. Yahoo. Okay. Bad they couldn't dump out up there in Bristol and come to this thing right now, wherever they are. 27th round draft. Yeah, when everything's done anyway, probably. I have a feeling that Labani just pulled up there to say we ain't ready yet. Two laps to go. I think they'll get one to go next time. Okay. Back 
at Martinsville, seven drivers and teams went home failing to qualify, including Randy LaJoy, Jeff Burton, Todd Bodine, Jimmy Spencer, Davey Jones, Chuck Mound, and Jay Hedgecock. We are less than a lap from the green flag. The light atop the pace car has gone out. In just a moment, the field will be under the direction of Bobby Labonte. Today's field consists of 19. 13 Fords, 13 Chevys, four Pontiacs. We will start this event with four provisional starters. Just about ready to go green here at Martinsville in the conclusion of the short track season for at least the spring. We won't be back at a short track after this until Bristol in August, August 26th to be exact. The field comes down, the green flag is out, and the Haynes 500 is underway at Martinsville. Bobby Labonte hesitated just a little bit, and Robert Preston took off into the lead. Oh, and Darrell Walker gets in the back of Labonte, and the pole shooter spins. No caution flag, and all the cars are still are going. And Robert Presley has just led for the first time in his NASCAR Winston Cup career, and the pole sitter Bobby Labonte is at the very tail of the field as now Darrell Waltrip chases Presley. There's Earnhardt trying to go, and Rusty Wallace. Morgan Shepard is there with Rusty and Dale as they try to move through the traffic. Earnhardt started 20th. Morgan Shepard alongside Kenny Schrader and Earnhardt is going by Wallace on the outside or trying to. And Earnhardt takes the spot. Watching from Rusty Wallace's perspective ahead, Earnhardt, Ken Schrader, Morgan Shepard, Shepard inside of Labonte. And, and Earnhardt, he gets, oh, and wow. is into the wall hard, and so is Morgan Shepard. And Earnhardt's luck here at the Martinsville Speedway. Of course, a lot of others have bad luck here today, but we pointed out at the top of the show what kind of luck he's had here. Terry Labonte is against the wall. The yellow flag is out, and Dale Earnhardt has significant damage as he comes down pit road. Rick Mast also has a massive amount of damage to his car and the field, and Earnhardt goes behind the wall. Straight behind the wall. They don't even stop on pit road. They take it behind the wall and frantically trying to work on the car. not had good luck at Martinsville. No. He has 11 DNFs at the Speedway, more than at any other facility on the tour. And not only Earnhardt, but several, several cars, cars heavily damaged back there. Labonte's car still sitting back there, heavily damaged. The Kellogg Chevrolet, there it is. And we can see damage to the front and rear. Morgan Shepard's car damaged. Derek Cope. It's still sitting on the racetrack. Jerry Punch has a comment. As you look at the front of the good race Chevrolet, the reason Earnhardt knew he had to come behind the wall was oil was pouring out from beneath the hood. Apparently, they have ruptured the part of the oil tank. Now, many parts we showed you a couple weeks ago on one of our track backs exactly what they have done to be able to keep the oil tank away from the left front of the car and put it closer as a part of the radiator. Well, that's the part that got hit today, and apparently, it has ruptured part of that tank as the crew now trying to peel some of the sheet metal away. The radiator pushed in and the oil tank apparently ruptured here on the Goodrich Chevrolet. How about Terry Labonte? Let's check in with John Curtin. Jerry, I just talked to Gary Dehart, his crew chief. They are, as soon as they can get that car into the pits, they're going to go to work on it. They have got some major repairs, is what Gary said. So they will be behind the wall for quite a while. Now let's go to the back stretch and Bill Weber. Well, this crew, the Sitco crew, heavily working on this car, which has severe damage. It starts on the right foot, goes all the way around to the rear of the car, damaged back by the fuel cell. They're trying to pull the 
the body away from the right rear tire. In the meantime, Rick Mass, gold car is being pushed alongside. It's going behind the wall backer as well. Both these teams have sustained significant damage. We'll be back here for some time. Trying to pull the sheet metal away from the tires. There's Rick Mast going behind the wall to get repairs as Labati's car is taken off the racetrack on a wrecker. Here is the replay. There we see the cars went in three abreast. Earnhardt on the outside of Labonte. Labonte comes up and touches the 21 in the back. Gets Morgan sideways. When he corrects, he comes back up and forces the five car up in the wall high off the ground. Earnhardt in the back of him. And there we see the four car, Sterling Marlin also involved. He hit the one car of Rick Mass, and then Derek Coke back behind there got involved in it as well. And Lake Speed also in the action. There we see Morgan go across, hit the five car, and bow! Heavy contact with the wall on the Kellogg Chevrolet. That's Lake Speed in the car number nine going sideways, and then Derek Cope and the in the car number 12, and Dick Trickle in car number 15 coming in there. And from the Family Channel blimp. See Earnhardt trying to go up on the outside of Terry Labonte. Labonte, as Benny mentioned, clips Morgan Shepard, gets him sideways, then he comes back out into Labonte. Labonte's car goes up on top of Shepard's car. Earnhardt back there, nowhere to go, and then. In fact, nobody had anywhere to go because the track was blocked. Here's the in car from John Andretti. Sir, you're right there in front of you, right here in front of you, right here in front of you. Big crash now, right down there in front. There you go. There you go. Good job. Good job. Boy, that was a good job. <laughs> that was Got a great unscathed. job. Yeah. I but thought he had the four car head on. <laughs> not so with the three car. It's behind the wall. Bill Weber is with Morgan Shepard. Well, Mor Morgan, very tough out there. A wild incident. You're involved with several other cars. Can you tell us what happened from your point of view? Well, I really don't know what was going on. I, I passed Terry going down the front straightaway. We didn't touch or anything. Went through turn one, and he runs in the back of me. And uh, I would have been okay, but he never would back out. He just kept pushing me and pushed me until he pushed me, turned me straight in the wall. And, and uh, luckily, he got caught up in it too. But, you know, what a shame. You guys look like you had a good car. You had been pretty quick. A lot of damage here. Your crew trying to get you back in. Uh, the Sitco Thunderbirds tore up pretty bad. Hey, okay, that's Morgan Shepard. Not very happy here very early. Well, the Wood Brothers just this weekend had an open house, announced they're building new shops and a new museum up at their shops near Stewart, Virginia. But, boy, they're hard at work now trying to get Morgan back in the race after he was involved in that incident. Here's John with Terry Labonte. Terry Labonte walking toward his cars are pulling it down to the truck. Terry, uh, a mess out there. I guess the only way to describe it. Yeah, it uh, really was. It was it was my fault. Uh, we came off the corner there, and Morgan's car got a little out of shape, and I, I guess he got out of the throttle a little bit, and I got in the back of him and turned him. It was my fault. All right, as you can see, Terry, uh, very disappointed as we look at the car. They've got a lot of work to do, uh, not only sheet metal, but suspension damage in the front end, too. More replays for you. Let's go to more uh, Michael Waltrip's in-car camera and listen. Heavy contact with it. No, he didn't. That was Terry Smith, the spotter, telling me he's okay. We'll take a break and be back with more from Martinsville, Virginia. 12 laps are completed. Trickle got some pretty good damage at 15 car, yeah. doesn't he? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I tell you what, Terry got in that wall hard, didn't he? He sure did. He sure as the world did. I like got out of here. I 
I admire guy steps up and said I made this. Yeah, I do too. Yes, sir. Andretti's got a big donut, doesn't he? Okay. running second, Greg Sachs is third, then Mark Martin and Kyle Petty. Several cars are crippled already because of the crash that we had in the opening laps of this race. We're watching Ricky Rudd, Jeff Gordon seems to be on the wow. outside making progress. Yes, sir. That is a bold move. This early in the race to go up on the outside. And Bobby Hamilton made the pass and just passed Ricky Rudd the lap before. So Jeff Gordon is definitely on the go. That is amazing how he just went right by Bobby Labonte on the outside. That's Bobby Hamilton. I'm Bobby Hamilton. <laughs> Bobby Labonte. <laughs> Punch me, will you? Well, you, well, you had half of it, right? Bobby, yeah. You had a Bobby part, right? You broke my shoulder two weeks ago. I should break something. I'll break your nose. That's right. <laughs> Daryl Waltrip chasing down the leader, Robert Presley. Waltrip with more victories than anyone on this racetrack. He has 11, five in this race, and six in the later race. Kyle Petty now sees Jeff Gordon in his rearview mirror. Petty is fifth, Gordon sixth. Let's see if Jeff tries that outside line again. Yesterday during the Slim Jim All Pro Race, we did see a good second move out there that allowed for a lot of passing, and it appears as if Jeff is going to make that work today. There probably is as good a second groove on this racetrack, Bob, as there is on any short track that they run on. And that's a little surprising when you consider that the turns are relatively flat. Yeah. Banking at just 12 degrees. I guess the cement they have in the turns here has uh, worked out well in that respect. Bill Elliott, Brett Bodine, Ken Schrader, and Rusty Wallace. This is 11th, 12th, 13th, and 14th. Rusty runs 14th. That's inside Rusty Wallace's car, directly behind Ken Schrader. Kenny Schrader was winner last week in the Super Trucks out in Saugus, California. Shredder, but just a little bit quicker and getting by two different things. Yeah, you got to be a good bit quicker on this race track. And Dale Earnhardt's GM Goodrich Chevrolet has moved from behind the wall and he rejoins the race. He's waiting right now for the field to go by because he doesn't want to pull out there on the inside lane, the groove of the racetrack, and get in someone's way. So. The point separation was 56 coming into this race. However, Sterling Marlin was also involved somewhat in that accident. There went Sterling by the number four car. So he is running all the way back in 28th position. Dale Earnhardt is 19 laps down to the leader. And Daryl Waltrip has taken the lead. And he got in the back of Robert Preston down in turn one. Got Preston just a little bit sideways, took the lead. 
And Presley has some uh, a long time getting the car back in control. Drops back to third place. Greg Sachs got by him also in the car number 40. Here's how Waltrip got the lead into turn one. Goes down in the corner. Looks like Presley might have got a little bit loose to begin with, and then there was some contact maybe. John Kernan has a report on Sterling Marlin. John? Bob, the second man in the points is back out there running, and I just talked to Tony Glover that they've got no extra damage on that car. He was also involved in that accident a little bit earlier. You probably see there's a bungee cord strapped across the hood. They knocked some of the hood pins out, but Tony says they should be all right. That other than that, the car is fine. We can see that cord that he's talking about going from the front bumper back to the windshield, trying to hold the hood on. And Derry Cope is all over the racetrack coming off the fourth corner. Yeah, he really got uh, loose there. Derry went uh, four laps down. He had to repair damage on his straight era car from that accident earlier in the race. So Marlin is the last car on the lead lap running in 28. Dick Trickle was also involved in that crash. He is just ahead. And Jerry has an update on Presley. A moment ago, Robert Presley radioed his brother, Charlie Presley, the crew chief, and said, I don't know what happened to the car. just jumped out from under me like I hit a patch of oil or something on the racetrack. And I don't think I got, the car got loose, but it just slipped abruptly without any warning at all. But the car's going to be running okay right now. Mark Martin, however, is catching up with him. And here is Jeff Gordon once again using that upper groove to try to pass Kyle Petty. That's a tough task, but he gets a good grip that time off the corner. But Kyle goes in the corner a little bit stronger than does a 24 car. This is the battle for fifth position. I think Jeff might have him. Well, good right on in there again. That the driver on the inside has to cooperate some for that driver on the outside to be able to make that pass. Because if Kyle wanted to really run it on in there hard, he could. But he's uh, giving him the racing room out there that he needs. Kyle doing a great job of trying to keep Jeff behind him, but now Gordon does go into fifth position. By the way, Dale Earnhardt lost 20 laps. He is 20 laps down. He lost 19 for repairs and has been passed by the leader, Darrell Waltrip. Darrell Waltrip has just taken off. He has left once he got into the lead. Here's Rusty going to the oh. inside, getting up on the curb, trying to take the spot away from Schrader. There's about a six inch curb on the inside of the corners here at Martinsville and you saw Rusty Wallace put that left front on that curb. The car jump up in the air. Sometimes it will knock the front end out of alignment doing that. It definitely can knock the toe end off. Morgan Shepard about ready to come back out into the battle. Morgan's going to be about 30 laps behind. And Robert Presley goes on the inside of Sachs trying to take spot away and here comes 24 up on the outside. That's Jeff Gordon on the outside of Mark Martin and takes that spot away. Boy, he has got a car that's working up there and taking advantage of every situation that comes along. Look at that, he can drive right up there on the outside of him. He's trying to take third away from Robert Presley. Frank Sachs a second, Presley third. Here comes Gordon. He may pass both of them here in the corner. Wow. That is impressive. Jeff Gordon has taken over the second spot. Morgan Shepard made a lap, came back in. We're inside Kyle Petty's car now. He is behind. Oh! oh. Looks like he and the six car got together down there. Maybe I was wrong. <laughs> Sometimes the cameras can be seen. Well, no, they run close here, Mark. You yeah. see Mark up on the outside of Preston now, trying to go by on the outside. 24. Jeff Gordon showed they could do it, so they're trying it. Now Francis said, well, I think I'll try it on the outside. Yeah, I think maybe the handle's gone away a little bit on Greg Sachs' car, so he's slowing down going into the corner, so that gives him the opportunity to jump up there on the outside. Presley to third, Martin to fourth, Sachs back to fifth. Bobby Hamilton moves alongside, or tries to move alongside of Bobby Hamilton, or rather Greg Sachs. Rusty Wallace and Ken Schrader continuing to battle side by side. And Rusty finally is able to get by Schrader. That's the 12th position. Daryl Waltrip leads this race.
the leader Darrell Waltrip go down the back stretch. He has about a half a straightaway advantage on second place Jeff Gordon. We'll be back with more of our coverage from Martinsville Virginia Speedway and the Haynes 500 where Darrell Waltrip is the leader right after this. Welcome back to ESPN Speed World coverage of the Haynes 500 from Martinsville. Daryl Waltrip, who has won 11 times, taken eight poles, has finished in the top five 26 times out of 40 races here in Martinsville as the leader, and there is second place, Jeff Gordon. And there is the interval between the two. Gordon has closed in a little bit, but Daryl is doing a good job of staying out there ahead. Uh, John Andretti off the pace. He's been in for a pit stop and is running very slowly. Looks like the brakes are going on the 37 car. There's some smoke. There you see on the top of the 37 car. There's some smoke in the right front section of the car, and he's going behind the wall. This is Mark Martin's suspension cams. Look at the heat generated by the brakes. That is the brake rotor, the red. You see is the brake rotor as he goes to the corner, flies the brake. It just turns it cherry red. And folks, we have just run 50 laps. That's a just one tenth of this race. Right. It's amazing how much the sidewall of that tire flops around. Look at the sidewall of that tire, how far it pulls away from the wheel. See down the straightaway? Has goes in against the wheel. Now when he goes to the corner, watch this sidewall of the tire go in. Wow, that is amazing. That is amazing how much that tire is working. Ted Musgrave and Kenny Wallace are battling for 13th position. Ted Musgrave, the family channel car, in practice here Friday morning, everyone thought was going to win the pole. He was about a tenth of a second faster than anyone who went out qualified, ended up 32nd. So that's just shows you how close they are. Only 26 hundredths of a second separating from first and 32nd. Musgrave has caught Kenny Schrader and Rusty Wallace passed Schrader just a few laps ago and has driven away. Rusty Wallace has caught Ricky Red. Red is running in the eighth position. There comes Musgrave on the inside of Schrader. Here's a Napa field summary where the cars were running last lap. You can see Rusty has moved up to ninth.
seven cars on the lead lap. Dale Earnhardt is 20 laps down at the moment. And the only car officially out of the race is Terry Labonte, who went into the backstretch wall very hard in the early crash. Schrader and Musgrave still having a battle out there. And Musgrave finally is able to get by Schrader. But here comes Kenny Wallace. And Schrader moves over, blocks the spot, and says, look, you guys want to pass? Going the other way. Brett Bodine is going to try it up high. And, and there's seven cars in trouble. Yes, he is. Jeff Bodine slowed down the back straight away as goes behind the wall. And and here's a battle that Dale Jarrett and Kyle Petty. Kyle's car has been awfully loose coming off of the corners. He gets broke loose and beat Jarrett that time, but his car has been very, very loose coming off the turns. This is the battle for sixth position. Jarrett to the inside of Kyle. They go down the back stretch, wheel to wheel, and door handle to door handle. And they just remain that way into the corner. And Rusty Wallace is right behind them. He has come all the way up in top of it. And as Kyle Betty came off that second corner last time, you can see exactly what Ned Jarrett was talking about. As his car slipped in the back end, and Jarrett can't make the pass. No, he couldn't get the traction down on the inside that he needed. Now Kyle's moved up the racetrack. He might have found himself something up there. He said, hey, I held him off up here. Maybe I ought to run up here in this position. And Rusty's going to try to figure him away to get around both of them. Right in with Rusty Wallace. You don't see that groove that Kyle Petty is running in many, many times here at Martinsville. Rusty Wallace pulls up on the outside of Jarrett. Jarrett pulls up on the inside of Betty. Well, Kyle has got some power at that straightaway. That Pontiac goes at the straightaway. Rusty had to get off the throttle. Well, you, you see him throw up his hand to Ricky Rudd and say, look, don't come on you. I'm going to back off a little bit. <laughs> Let these guys go at it. Yeah. See what's going to happen here. Now, Jarrett with another attempt. To the third turn. Maybe he may have it this time. Yes, he does. He had to work for that position. They sure did. Jared moves to sixth, and to seventh. Here comes Rusty Wallace and then Ricky Rudd. And we're told that Jeff Bodine did lose an engine in the inside battery forward. And the bad luck for Jeff Bodine continues, and you can see that they have a little bit of a flame at the right rear of that car. That's where the gear is. Looks like he lost a gear in that car. Rusty has passed Kyle. Now, Ricky Rudd will try to. The nine car breaks of uh, Lake Speed is a lap down in 27. in this little tussle. Jeremy Mayfield has a new crew chief this week. Tony Furr has left the Joe Nemechek team. Don't know what Phil Yarborough Motorsports and Jeremy Mayfield tells me he is just delighted to have Tony over there. Here we see Nemechek, the 87 car that Tony Furr left. We're talking about the Burger King car. And guys, Darrell Walter is just about to put a lap on the pole set. Of course, Bobby Lomani got spun out early there and uh, just had bad track position, but now about to go a lap down. Lomani is 24th and is now a lap down to the field. The next car that will go a lap down is Steve Grissom there in car number 29. We'll be back with more from the Haynes 500. In just a moment, Daryl Waltrip leads Jeff Gordon and Mark Martin.
the seven. D.W. looks like the D.W. bowl, don't he? Yeah, mm -hmm. he does. But Gordon's catching him all along, but still, he's Darrell's really going good. Six car cut across the middle of the middle. Yeah, this time he's going to be spun out. <laughs> he, he's got some lump under the hood. Telling you. has just dispensed with a bunch of traffic remains in the lead however his advantage over Jeff Gordon is now well what about 25 car lengths or so he's got two cars between himself and Jeff Gordon that's the biggest advantage that Darrell Walter has right now is those two cars because Jeff Gordon has got to get by and that's Hutt Strickland in the Quaker State car first ride for him in this car and also Mike Wallace and some contact Wallace goes around and Craven runs in the back column also Dave Marcus Benz and we see Mark Martin, Martin got stopped he got stopped there but don't think he hit anything and the caution flag is out Wallace is going again Dave Marcus is trying to get his car headed in the right direction he has damage of course to the rear of the Heiling Myers Ford and to the front and to the front as well yes That's tricking once again in the 26 car just makes contact with the 90 car around goes Mike Wallace Jeff Gordon to the outside here comes Craven along he hits the 90 knocks off the rear bumper and Mark Martin is Ned said he just stopped I guess Greg Sachs probably stopped as well and we yeah, see Mike. Dave Marcus spun out over there I don't think he hit anything though. Okay the leaders will be coming into the pits. Darrell Walter and Jeff Gordon are in. Here comes Bobby Hamilton, Mark Martin, Rusty Wallace, Robert Presley, Dale Jarrett, Ricky Rudd, Kyle Petty, and the others who are on the lead lap. Work being done on the right side now, the Western Auto Chevrolet. Emphasis switching to the left side as Jeff Gordon is down from the jacks. He's moving. Let's see if Darrell Walter's going to beat him out just by a little bit. Rusty is finished with his pit stop. He's moving. So is Jared. So the caution flies once again over Martinsville Speedway. And we'll have more of our coverage of the Haynes 500 in a moment. Our second caution. Second. There wasn't a caution when uh, the 18 right. car. We didn't have a replay on that 18 getting bumped either, did we? I said he got made contact with the 17. Do you think that's right, Ned? Do we have a con? Do we ever have a replay? We've had a replay on it or not? Did we show that three angles? Did he get touched? You think, Mike? Did he get touched?
I wasn't looking at it, Penny, so I don't know. He wasn't? He just lost it? No, 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 no. no. We're talking about 18 the on the lead lap. 18 on car on the, on the first lap. <laughs> oh, oh. oh. <laughs> Do we ever show a replay of that? I don't think I don't so. Think so. No. I said there was contact between the 17 and 18. I just wonder if that was correct. Well, Ted Musgrave made a good pit stop on the back stretch. I'm out in fifth place. Yeah, did Wow, he beat Rusty's bunch out. One to go. Okay. to Martinsville Speedway in Virginia, where the Haynes 500 is less than 100 laps old. 90 laps have been completed. You saw the major incident in the opening laps of this race. Now we are live, where Darrell Waltrip continues to lead the race. There are 17 cars, as you can see, on the lead lap. We'll be giving you all the other things that have occurred in the last few laps in just a moment. Dale Earnhardt back in 31st position, 20 laps down. You saw down. Bobby Labonte there a lap down. He was our pole sitter here in the interstate battery car. Here we are on the first lap. And it looked like that Darrell Waltrip in the 17 might have made just slight contact with the 18. Around goes Bobby Labonte. But he's able to get the car going again. No caution flag. 
And we had another incident uh, not too long ago. Hutt Strickland and Mike Wallace. They get together, touch just a little bit. Wallace spins around, and then here comes the field. 41 car gets by. Greg Sachs goes up there and stops. Mark Martin comes up there and stops, but it did bring out the caution. Dave Marcus spun around as well. There have only been two cautions. That incident there on the first lap with Bobby Labonte, the spin did not cause a caution. You have seen the two causes of the cautions that we have had here today. Now let's update some people. Dr. Jerry Punch first. Bob when we began today, this was a manicured nose to a Chevrolet Monte Carlo. Doesn't look very manicured right now. Earnhardt's front grille all shoved in. And what caused the problem? Well, we removed some of the headlight covers. Part of the composite front end, which still says Monte Carlo. Behind that, some of the wire mesh and some of the sheet metal. And we finally get down to this baby right here. That's the oil cooler. That was what was shoved up beneath the radiator and ruptured, and that's what cost him some 20 laps in the pits. He is now in 31st position with a new oil cooler and, of course, some damage on the front end back upstairs. He is 20 laps down. Dale Earnhardt in 31st position. Rick Mast is also out of the race. At least he is pulled behind the wall. Bill Weber, what's the problem there? Well, Rick Mast is climbing back into the skull Ford. He was involved in that early incident we saw. He's climbing back into his car, but he's many, many laps down. Of course, heartbreak for Morgan Shepard. This is their local track, the team from Stewart, Virginia. He is more than 40 laps down. He has a single four tack on the track. And John Andretti had great problems in final practice yesterday. Almost identical problems here in the early laps today. John Andretti is more than 30 laps down. Let's go to John well, Terry Labonte also involved in that incident with Dale Earnhardt earlier. Unlike Earnhardt, they were unable to get the car repaired. They are uh, are out of it. This Sterling Marlin was also involved in some minor damage to his car. He's got a bungee cord over the hood. He is now running in 17th place last time. Car very, very loose. They put in three rounds of fight, but Sterling is one lap down. Let's go down to Jerry Punches with Jeff O'Dine, who has also dropped out of the race. And a tough afternoon for Jeff Bodine. Jeff, sorry to see you out of it. What happened? Uh, it looked like we uh, burned a bearing out and then broke a ride. Running really good. You know, I started out, put myself in a real hole here in Martinsville, didn't qualify good, started last. But, you know, the car was working really good. We were making progress and moving to the front. Thought we were going to have a good day, but it all went up in smoke when the ride broke. But, you know, races is important. And we want to win these races. But you know what happened today here in the garage area is even more important. My crew, I had a birthday Tuesday, turned another year older. Maybe that's what happened, I don't know. But anyway, my crew had a uh, birthday party for me here this morning, and we had a cake and a lot of food, decorated a transporter, really had a great time. And that's what makes me feel good. I'm smiling right now because I'm thinking about how much these people care about me, their driver, their corner and their friends, so there'll be more races, but i tell you what, there are more people like I've got right here that work on this crew, so I want to thank all of them. Barry's back home. He didn't make the birthday party. You missed a good party, Barry. I love you. What a family here in NASCAR, guys. Jeff Bodine out of the race. Terry Labonte's DNF today is a streak of 16 consecutive races that he's been running at the finish. We focus on first and second. It remains Darrell Waltrip by just a tiny bit over Jeff Gordon. Looks like old D.W. Bowl, doesn't it? He's had 40 starts here at this racetrack, has won 11 times, has a pole position, and has finished in the top five 26 times. It does look like the Darrell Walter Bowl. He's won over 25% of his races here at Martinsville, and anywhere that's a great percentage. And normally he does that by just sitting back in the top 10 somewhere, all, you know, just running all day long, staying out of trouble, and then the last hundred laps or so makes his move. Today, he's running up there and dominating the race. Uh, here's the man that's on the move. That is Rusty Wallace, and he has moved all the way up to third position. I guess Darrell Walton, that's one reason he's running so hard, because they've told him that Rusty Wallace is on the move. He started 15th and now is up to third. Our fourth place car this afternoon is the sixth car. Mark Martin of Bible in fourth. There he is. Mark dodged a bullet just a few minutes ago. 
stopped before he made contact with the car that had spun in front of him, but he is okay running fourth. And the car in fifth place is the car number 16, who is Mark Martin's teammate, Ted Musgrave, in the Family Channel 4. Hitting on the back stretch made an awfully good pit stop during that caution. Musgrave started 32nd. He was the slowest qualifier to get in. At lap 27, he was 18th. And as you can see, he has moved steadily up to fifth position. Next Kyle, go ahead, Benny. Kyle Petty, the first silver bullet. Is on the lead lap. He's currently running in uh, what? This six six spot. Kyle, uh, that's was sick last week at North Brooklyn two weeks ago, but as good as it is today, I think Kyle can finish the race and Marshall, no problem. This is his in-car camera being carried in the Coors Light Racing Pontiac. Notice the tack over there on the far left, the RPMs. Down to what, about 4,500, Benny, and then up to... Wow. Nine, almost 9,000. Almost 9,000 9, RPMs. That's why he's got that bump up the straight away. That's right. Here's a little bit more uh, clear view of that. There you can see up that to about 8,500 RPM. And you watch, he's breaking with his left foot, hitting the throttle with his right foot. I believe his RPM's a little bit higher on the back stretch. We'll see here if he does go up there a little bit higher. Well, no, I think about 8,500 yeah. as high as our yeah. chart goes, and he's not taking that. His dad used to brake with his right foot. He would lift off the throttle and use the right foot to brake. But Kyle, like most current drivers, new drivers, uh, is using his left foot. I know I always use my left foot. Did you not, really? Not saying I'm young or anything, but That's I was for sure. <laughs> that must have started about the time that you were coming along. Yeah. Because I know I like Richard brake with my right foot yeah. all the time. That's just the way we did it back then. And you guys came along and told us better. <laughs> Here is Robert Presley running behind Ken Schrader. Presley started the race in second position and led the opening laps. This is for 10th position. Schrader gets caught. Some of that magic they had was it 1991 that Harry Gant won the race in that car mm -hmm. when he crashed over turn three, and I said, unfortunately, he wasn't going to win. <laughs> you always keep reminding yourself of that. I yeah. don't do that, but <laughs> that was very impressive that day. And Robert Presley has a good run going today. Rick Mast is back on the racetrack, by the way. We told you, in fact, we showed you that he was behind the wall for a while, but he's back out on the track. Meanwhile, the 26 car, the Quaker State Ford, owned by Kenny Bernstein, driven by Hut Strickland, goes behind the wall. And this battle continues to rage on, but Ken Schrader is able to maintain 10th position, keeping Robert Presley back in 11th. And in 12th spot is Greg Sachs. There is the leader, and you can see that his lead over Jeff Gordon has widened just a little bit. Rusty Wall is running third. Mark Martin is fourth and Ted Musgrave fifth after 117 laps of the Haynes 500. Boy, Rusty hey, is coming on. Don't give credit Shoot. to us. You're the one that I said Rusty it. is coming on. Um, let's see. Yeah, he sure is. Sorry there, Bob. So that's okay. I'd rather stand, but I want to get down here and read this.
updated on where everyone is running in the Haynes 500 here in Martinsville under their Napa Field Summary. We're riding on top of Mark Martin's car as he runs in fourth position. Ahead is Sterling Marlin, who is a lap down in 16th, as you see. Now 17th, sorry. 15 cars are on the lead lap. The guy on the move is Rusty Wallace. He has caught Jeff Gordon. Can he take second spot? Easily. Yeah, yeah. no problem. With ease, Rusty Wallace and Miller, genuine draft Ford. So we talked about the top of the show, Ned. He's won the last two races here. And he certainly has that combination. Let me see Bobby Hamilton, the STP Pontiac. Runs for seventh spot. Move up back to eighth. And I'm sure Richard Petty is in the hospital today watching this on TV. And Richard, we're all thinking of you and wish you the best. He had surgery last Monday, I guess it was, or Tuesday. My brother-in-law Malcolm Benton is in uh, under the weather in Colorado. We want to wish him the best. And my brother King had a major operation this week as well in the hospital recuperating in Charlotte, North Carolina. John Andretti's not been able to use his brakes the way he ought to. Well, the corner and the car drifted up. Like he couldn't have happen. By that time, he stayed on the bottom of the racetrack like the brakes were working like okay. Andretti's like 35 laps down. He went behind the wall for quite a while. He calls off a brake problem. Right. There is Rusty Wallace getting around a lap car of Elton Sawyer. Elton gave this car a good run during qualifying. In his very first Winston Cup race ever, Elton Sawyer qualified ninth. He now is currently running 24 spot as Jeff Gordon goes by. Jeff Gordon going to the outside now of Morgan Shepard involved in that early lap crash that you saw. His third consecutive win here at Martinsville. He won both races last year. He's won the last three out of four here. And there is the leader, Daryl Waltrip. Back now to the Roush cars, Mark Martin and Ted Musgrave, who are fourth and fifth. And Ted Musgrave has caught Mark Martin. And a spin involving Mike Wallace and Michael Waltrip. Michael Waltrip. The caution is out for the third time today. Walter comes down pit road, however, does not stop. Keeps right on going. And the pace car will pick up the field for the third time. And Michael Walter did beat his brother Daryl back to the line, stayed safe, going a lap down. Another lap down. Right, he's already one lap down. Mm -hmm. Darrell Waltrip had led only two laps this year prior to today, and he has led 105 of the first 130. The 24 car, Jeff Gordon, currently in third spot, has led every race this year. And the leaders come in for pit stops, all except Ted Musgrave. He chose not to. No, he's pitting on the back stretch. Okay. Here's John Curry. Rusty Wallace is in a four tire change. They're going to take a round to bite out as Todd Parrott makes the move in that right rear. Right side's already on the, on the left side. Let's go down. Jerry Punch. They have no plan Jesse adjustments at all in the Western Auto Chevrolet. Right side tires already going on. Left side tires going on. As, as Rusty is out 17 point nine here, and Darrell Walsh is down 19 even as they will head back to turn one at 22.7 for the car number 24 of Jeff Gordon. So a, oh, and there's no right rear on Ricky Rudd's car. Yeah, a tough break for him. They, I don't know what happened there, but somebody didn't get the wheel back on. They had a miscommunication of some sort. Tough break for Ricky Rudd. And we can see they have to lift the car up to get the jack under it, and he will go a lap down. Rudd is a lap down now. Ricky Rudd was, was running in eighth position. But now, because of the mix-up on pit road, goes a lap down. Under our third caution here at Martinsville, we'll be back with more live coverage in a moment.
can say live now, can't I? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we are live and in color. I get my arms out here in you guys' way. Uh -oh. no, I don't well, know. I'm sometimes. I'm... Yeah. Michael Walter. 95, leader of 70. Go to the rear of the longest line. I don't know, Neil, but we're, you're clipping every uh, beginning of your words. <laughs> we are back at Martinsville. Take a look and a listen here at Michael Waltrip. 95, leader of 70. as hard as he can to get that lap back but he could not do it and while we were watching uh, the reef of the uh, break while we were in break we had an incident over in the second corner and this is how that occurred there we see the 11 car and Nemechek makes some contact as Brent Bodine no I'm sorry that was 31 car Nemechek looks like just bunned by himself did he mean their cars were so bunched up and so close together it's really hard to tell maybe there was some beating and banging back there in that area Focus on live action and Russ and Rusty Wallace is about to take the lead from Daryl Waltrip. And he does it. Rusty Wallace is, has led the Haynes 500. You see Jeff Gordon back in uh, fifth spot right now had a little bit of a slow pit stop about two or three seconds slow and it cost him about three spots. Two spots. Once again, Ted Musgrave hitting on the backstretch had another great pit stop. He's in fourth position. Jerry Punch has a report on what happened down there in the pit stop with Ricky Rudd. You saw Ricky Rudd's right rear tire come off when he tried to leave the pit. The pump was, once again, a lug nut stuck inside the socket on the right rear air gun. Now, Keith Colesbeck, who changed the right rear tire, took the fifth lug nut off. And so this is the one that got stuck. He couldn't put any back on. He ran around the car to get another lug wrench, and by that time, they had dropped the jack, and Ricky was starting to leave with no right rear tire. That cost him a lap. And he has been unable to get it back. There you see first, second, and third now. It's Wallace, Waltrip, and Martin. And Mark Martin is running just a little bit faster than he has been before. Brent Bodine, an unscheduled pit stop for him in the Lowe's Ford in the pits. Must have, in that mix up on the backstretch, Benny, I believe he got a fender knocked in against the tire. Yeah, we saw him just a moment ago make some contact with Ward Burton in the Hardy Chevrolet and evidently knocked the fender in on the tire. 
Brett was one of those 14 drivers that was on the lead lap. But not anymore. And now they will only be 13. Rusty Wallace got by Darrell Walter, but he's certainly not driving away. DW in the Western Auto Chevrolet having a great run today. Wallace's last five finishes here at Martinsville. Three wins, two seconds, and we see some, uh, I'm not even going to say it, on the front glass of our booth. This couple drops. You can see sunshine. You yes. can see it on the lens of the camera on top of Mark Martin's car. Rained all morning long. Delayed the start of the race. You can see some uh, bright skies in the distance, but right over the racetrack, a little bit of moisture is falling. Not enough, however, to cause a caution. No, it's certainly not enough moisture at this time. See Earnhardt in front of Rusty Wallace. About to go one more lap down. Right now Earnhardt is 21 laps down in 30th spot. We're on lap 148. We need 100, and we're now on 149. We need 101 laps to make it an official race. In NASCAR racing, you're right. If you get halfway, they do consider that an official race. Lap 251 would be a race. Have you seen on Hart, the good red Chevrolet, going another lap down to the leaders? Heavy damage to the front of the Chevrolet. All he can do is just sit there and ride, make laps, and hope a lot of drivers fall out of the race. Exactly. Jerry has more on Russell Wallace. I spoke with Rusty this morning. He said, you know, a lot of young drivers don't understand about short track racing. He said the key in a short track is not how deep you drive the car in the turn. It's who gets on the gas first. We put a computer in our car and looked at the throttle response. He said, when I back off the throttle, this fast start finish line, I'm going to be the very first one back in the gas in the corner. He said, if you watch Darrell Waltrip and people who have been successful in the short tracks, they're the ones who do it that way. Back off early and jump in to throttle back in the middle of the corner. So if you try to drive the car deep in the turn, all you're going to do is burn the brakes and the tires off the car. That's a very good point, Jerry. It's so true. And Darrell Walker has certainly learned that well over the years. And something I need to point out, Rusty was talking about when he tested and he put the computer in the car. Because under NASCAR rules, they can't have computers in the cars now during the race or he tested or practice, I should have qualified. Jeff Gordon has dropped back to fifth position. There you see Ted Musgrave in fourth spot. Now Gordon has caught up to Musgrave. He isn't too far behind the third place car, Mark Martin. Jeff Gordon in that 24 car, the DuPont Automotive Finish of Chevrolet, has been phenomenal this year. Up until this race, it led about 40% of all the laps run in 1995. Well, we saw on the left of our screen there coming off the turn two. Darrell Walker is working on Rusty Wallace. He sees those raindrops. He said, I want back out front here, although, as you said, we're almost 100 laps away from halfway, so it wouldn't wouldn't be a race, but he is working on it. He took a look on the inside of Rusty Wallace that time, going down in turn one. That's the same thing as the group, but Nate makes no effort to take the lead. That was not a, an attempt to pass there. That was just to get out of the rear view mirror on Rusty Wallace's car. Just worry Rusty a little bit. A little sight. Oh, oh, contact. He worried it pretty good, but Darrell backed <laughs> all the way off of it. Later, he gets straight out. He might even lose second place. Oh, oh no, he's going to hold off Mark Martin and Ted Musgrave. But it sure has closed up one through five. Tell you what, that was a nice move by Darrell Walker to back off and let Rusty get the car back under control.
There you see Darrell runs up, taps him just a little bit. That's a critical point in the turn. Got him sideways, and we see Rusty's hand come out the window there. He was motioning Darrell to come on by. He yeah. thought Darrell was, was coming up there, yep. but uh, he didn't know they'd driven off and left him because yeah. Darrell had backed off. All right, there's three, four, and five. Martin, Musgrave, and Gordon up front. It is Darrell Waltrip second, and the leader of the race, Rusty Wallace. Much longer, I guarantee you. That. This is really pretty darn hard. Hey, what old DW got him a ride today? He sure has. <laughs> Had a great race car. I know. Where's that? Point? Pop in a shop, huh? Okay. Overhead shots today of Martinsville Speedway again being provided by the Family Channel Blimp. Currently in the area part of its 95 nationwide tour dedicated to promoting the power of family by using the blimp to support charitable organizations and being involved in national sporting events. Well shop top is, is coming up at the end of our telecast here from Martinsville this afternoon and it will be featuring Dale Earnhardt your opportunity to buy some uh, souvenirs. And to hear the latest from the Richard Childress shops. Earlier in the race, Dale Earnhardt had a major problem that you can see there at the front of the car. Here's what happened. Well, Ricky Rudd, I mean, Terry Labonte in car number five, tapped Morgan Shepard in number 21, sent him sideways. Shepard came back up into him. Earnhardt had committed to go on the outside, got into the Terry Labonte car. And as you can see, a lot of other cars got involved as well. And Earnhardt broke the oil cooler on the car. They had to come in the pits, either bypass the oil cooler or put a new one on. He's 22 laps down in 30th position, and there definitely is rain in the area. People here in the grandstand ahead of us have brought out their rain gear, and you can see that there is rain on the windshield. John Kernan, well, who should we turn to in this time? John Kernan, our resident meteorologist. Well, Bob, I'm working on that meteorology thing. One of these days I'm going to get it, but this is the uh, most recent radar image. As you can see, this light green, light rain. This is the Martinsville Speedway. It's right a few minutes ago. It was on the edge of an opening. Now, this morning, this rain has been all around us, and it's been tracking this way. That's why we were able to get the race going. But this last bunch has seemingly been pushed toward the southeast. And uh, that could spell bad news for us. We might have some light rain here for a little while. It's out to 50 nautical miles, and it's been moving around 30 miles an hour. So if it does come in, it may be around for uh, over an hour. Yeah, the fronts have been dancing all around the East Coast. The cold for the warm front rather moved up, and now it looks like the cold front is moving down. So it, uh, it's, it's raining pretty good, and the caution is out. It's raining too much now to continue racing. It really was getting uh, very slippery out there. So and Rusty Wallace and Darrell Walter racing back to the line. It will be Rusty. 171 laps completed, and the caution flag comes out on lap 172. So we're still, what, uh, 80 what? some laps away from the halfway point? You're right. 79 actually. As the Pontiac safety car pulls out in front of Rusty Wallace. And rain, rain, go away. It hasn't rained in this area of the country, I understand, for quite a while, and everybody is wanting the rain, but we wish that it would just stay away for at least a couple of more hours that we could get our race in and here this afternoon. And then we, we need rain. Back. Yeah, and then we can have as much rain as we want. Rusty Wallace.
Daryl Waltrip, Mark Martin, Ted Musgrave, and Jeff Gordon are the top five with the rain delay. <sighs> okay. We're gonna do a stick mic. You want? Give me my, my, my glasses out of my coat. My other. We're gonna do stick mics or, it's in or headsets. We don't have our coats on. Is that okay? I don't have my tie done. Oh, we look kind of scruffy up here in the booth because we've loosened our ties and taken off our coats. And okay. Comb my hair, both of them. Ah. <laughs> Headsets, right, Neil? Bob Jenkins. Bob, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Benny Parsons. Nice to meet you. Hi. I do, huh? Hi, I'm Ned Jarrett. Hi, Ned. Nice oh, dear. Yes, we got a spare right down here. I used to watch you. You did? Yep. Where did you watch me? Did you use the race? Oh. Mm -hmm. Before you were Born. Yeah, that's where you were born. So I didn't watch you, okay? <laughs> My dad watched you. All right. We got to get camera up, Big Boo, first. He'll be up here in a minute. Okay. He'll have a hard time doing it because everybody's leaving. <laughs> he sure he's going the wrong way on a one way street. He also what I've yeah, right. You may have watched Benny. 15 seconds. Oh. I'm ready. <laughs> what are we doing? <laughs> it is raining again at Martinsville. Enough to bring out the caution and wet down the racetrack. Here's the auto light field summary now. As of the rain delay, 13 cars are on the lead lap. But the pole sitter Bobby Labonte is not. He's in 15th position a lap down. And you can see the rain hitting the lens of our camera. Kenny Wallace had a nice schedule pit stop for a flat tire. That's one of the reasons he's a couple of laps down. And Earnhardt, 22 laps down in 30th spot. Jeff Bodine and Terry Labonte, the two cars that hour out of the race. They brought the jet dryer out, but they're not making a whole lot of progress because it is raining quite hard. It has turned the track at dark gray, which means it's pretty wet. Well, they're keeping the cars out on the track, circling the track because the heat and the air off them will have a drying effect. How long they'll continue to do that will depend on how hard it rains. And you see the crews have put tarps on their pits. You will see the raindrops in the puddles. Not a real heavy downpour, but again, enough to bring things to a halt. With 324 laps to go. And they're trying to keep their pit area just as dry as they can. So if they go back green flag racing and the car makes a pit stop, they'll be able to get traction when they drop the jack. And that's a look down the back stretch pits, and you can see they're doing the same thing. Well, it's our first rain delay of the year, and we'll be back in just a moment to Martinsville. <laughs> That thing down here, aren't we? Where are you from, young lady? By the way, Ralph made it. Where are you from? Sun Valley, Idaho. Sun Valley, Idaho. It's, it's downhill. That's, that's downhill. Okay. Okay. Expecting four people to stand on this. <laughs> Boy, there's no way we can get everybody in the shot, Neil. We don't have enough uh, casing to stand Sweet on. Car. 11. Look at the monitor. I'm up. Okay, he's here. What? We need to behave. 
day. Need all the Her friends. fifth consecutive World Cup championship. Is it Peekaboo? Uh huh. Well, you get a weird name like that. <laughs> she won a silver medal at Lillehammer. Uh huh. Who named you Peekaboo? Uh, my mom and dad. It's an Indian name, means shining waters, and it comes from a town I south of where I live. Yes. Yeah. DW General Manager. Nope. Back at Martinsville, where the umbrellas have come out and the other rain gear. Those are the spotters that are standing up on uh, one of the buildings at the uh, between turns one and two here at Martinsville. They are the guys that tell their drivers what to do and what's happening out on the racetrack. Yes, we heard Terry Smith talking to Darrell Walter when Dar uh, Michael Walter when Michael spun coming off the second corner, telling him to beat his brother back to the line. Speaking of Michael Walter, there he is. And Jerry Punch is with Clyde Booth. There isn't much, ref much refuge for the spotters, but unfortunately here in the pits, they are able to put up a few tents. And Clyde, uh, as team manager for Darrell Walter, you guys are going to be tickled with the way the cars are running so far. Well, we are. Uh, you know, it, it's really been a really good weekend for us all weekend long. You know, we got here, we unloaded off the truck, it was fast, and uh, he's just been real happy with the car. So it's kind of really, I would say, probably the best weekend we've had this year. It's been real fun, you know. This didn't happen by accident. Actually, you were here three days last week testing Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and ran hundreds of laps here. What did you find out about the race car? Well, actually, we were here for those three days. We were really confused at the end of the three days. And the fact that we had the onboard uh, acquisition system and that we were able to go home and uh, kind of sort all the information out. We chose a setup that we didn't even try here, but due to the information that we, that we found from the computer, uh, we put that in a car and we came back here with it and it seemed to work fine. Well, and apparently whatever the computer said is working as Darrell Walter currently running in second spot. Let's go to Bill Weber. Well, it's no dryer back here. Howard Comstock taking shelter under our umbrella. Jack Rouse just back here talking to you. Your team cars are having a good day, especially Teddy had to come from the back of the pack. Yeah, we, uh, well, he took off like a rocket ship when the race started, and we made up a lot of positions. Some people had a little bit of trouble. That helped us, but he's, we practiced good here all weekend, and he's really fast, and he's right right now. And when he's come into the pits, some practices paid off for your pit crew. Yeah, the guys have practiced really hard back at the shop all for the two weeks that we were off. It's really paid off. Okay, so Ted Musgrave on the move from the back of the pack. Let's go to John Kearney. Well, it continues to rain out here. In fact, I think I see the uh, red flag in the starter's hands, and I'm standing along with our leaders, crew chief Robin Pemberton. And Robin, what a shame. Rusty looked like he uh, had it all together today. Yeah, we're doing pretty good. Uh, we were we made some adjustments adjustments the last stop we're not as good now as we were before the stop so uh darn rain huh <laughs> yeah i tell you you guys stop and uh, you can't touch the cars but what do you talk about as to, uh, far as pit strategy when you get the race restarted well we'll just talk about the chassis and get the, the things that we can talk about quietly that uh ordinarily you'd have to talk on the radio you know things to do later on in the race uh, if it comes to a short run or something like that but uh the way he is here and the way the car has been, uh, we probably won't do anything. Yeah, I think I, I heard we're, uh, you guys, same setup uh, that Rusty ran here last fall, taking into account some cars about 100 pounds lighter. Yeah, they take these springs and they lock them in a vault, and uh, then when they come back to Martinsville, they break them back out. So it's been pretty easy for me. We've tried a bunch of different things, but uh, he just happens to like these four springs. Well, the springs that are, well, as good as gold here at Martinsville for Rusty are on the car right now. Then they'll be moved into the vault after they get back home, Bob. The covers go on, the red flag is out, and we have halted proceedings here at Martinsville because of rain. There are now 183 laps completed. We are not yet to the halfway point, so it's not quite an official race. We'll be back with a special guest in a moment.
because we can only get two people uh, on three camera. at the most three at the most. Uh, well, but see, we don't side. have we got to stand on. Who me? Welcome back to Martinsville Speedway in Virginia, where it is raining, bringing a halt to the Haynes 500 at the conclusion of 183 laps. Watch ESPN tonight as the major leaguers gear up for the 95 season. The Oakland A's go up against the San Francisco Giants. All this, of course, is preseason activity at 8 o'clock Eastern time live from Scottsdale, Arizona. Some spring showers here at uh, Martinsville today. Standing to my left, ladies and gentlemen, is Peekaboo Street, who uh, just recently won her fifth consecutive world championship in uh, downhill, and she won a silver medal. And when I watched her at Lillehammer, I thought, gee, what a nice, sweet, dainty, petite little girl she is. And look, I'm 6'3", and she's taller than I am. <laughs> I'm standing on a box. Okay. <laughs> How are you? I'm fine, thanks. Good to see you. Thanks, thanks. Now, I often think that race drivers are crazy when they get out on the racetrack and go... 200 miles an hour around Talladega, but you, 80, what, 85 miles an hour on skis? Yeah, it's kind of crazy. Man, I guess it it's is. It's fun, though, the rush. <laughs> it has to be. But yeah. you must start at a mile an hour or two miles an hour, just kind of gliding along and work your way up, right? Yeah, well, I, I usually don't go that slow. I usually get, get going probably five or ten by, with my, my push out of the start, and then you know, pretty soon after that with my size, I, I can generate some pretty good momentum right off the bat, so. Been skiing all your life? Yeah, I've been skiing since I was five. Started out chasing my brother and my dad around the mountain in Sun Valley <laughs> and um, and started moving on to, to courses and now I'm at the top of my game, so it's it's fun. And your my speed day. here on this racetrack, uh, the speeds the cars are running here is not much faster than you <laughs> ski. No, it's not, and it's kind of scary when I stand right down on the side and I feel them whisk by so fast, and I think, wow, I actually go that fast sometimes, and <laughs> it, it's kind of scary, but um, but it's it's thrilling for sure. Is this your first race? Yes, this is. I race. I, I watch tons of Winston Cup races on TV and stuff, but um, I've never actually been to one, and and to go right down there. I'm the, I'm the Grand Marshal here, so I started their engines this morning, and everything stood right next to the track for the first 10 laps, and I was in awe the whole time. I couldn't believe how fast everything was happening. Now, okay, your name. Yeah. I mean, it's P-I-C-A-B-O, but Peekaboo is P-E-E-K-A-B-O-O. -O. <laughs> right, but so. that's the game. And my name is not, it's not supposed to be affiliated with the game. It's supposed oh. to be affiliated with the indigenous word meaning shining waters. Which How about is that? A little is history lesson. Yeah. I should never ask a question like oh, that anyway. Shit, Benny. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of like shining uh, forehead shining. or something quite, like that. Yeah. <laughs> Not quite. <laughs> so yeah. your duties as Grand Marshal here uh, for the day, what else do you have to do? Well, I, I would say I get to, I get to start their engines, and I was going to get to run around in the, in, the, in the pace car, but with the rain delay and everything, we were in a hurry to get going while we were, had some good weather, so, so we did that. And I'm um, here as a... As a part of Haynes so I'm in the booth over there listening to the scanner so I get to listen to like all the car racers talk on their on their little speakers and and talk to their pit crews and stuff and their strategies and things so that that to me is what I'm really excited about right now is getting into the to the groove of it so you don't use radio communication in your race yes we do you very do. much so so that's why I like the similarity in it because like before I race I have four or five coaches alongside the course on the way down that tell me what the course conditions are, if it's changed, if I need to change my line going into a, diff different, a certain section, if it's gotten slower or faster. So it's real similar, a lot, a lot of tactics. But while I'm going, it's, it's me, it's my show, it's all my deal. But beforehand and all the preparation, there's, there's a lot of us that, that are involved in the whole thing. Well, we admire what you do, and we thank well, you thanks. for joining us if yeah. you're in the booth today. Peekaboo Street. It. Let's go uh, back down and talk to Rusty Wallace and Bill Weber. Okay, Rusty Wallace has just finished meeting with his uh, his team. Robin Pepperton has been over here. The whole guys, I thought they were going to call a play and uh, do a little football out here. But obviously, leading the race uh, under a rain delay, Rusty, you've got a good car and you've had a good run. That yeah, car's really handling well. I've been real happy with it all week. I screwed up again qualifying like I normally do. I'm just not a good qualifier. And uh, I told the guys, I said, well, let's take this thing nice and easy. Try to log some laps, take care of these brakes. Well, I got the lead right now, and here comes Mother Nature. So uh, we go back. We'll just log some more laps. This is a long race, and brakes are important. But boy, this Miller Junior Draft Ford Thunderbird is really running great out there today. It's not unusual to see you up front at Martinsville. You've had tremendous success at this track. Well, we're really working hard on our shock absorbers. We're working hard on our chassis setup. We had one faulty uh, pit stop early. The guys got their stuff together, and everything's good right now. 
Uh, the key to the game is right now, since we're good, it's just log laps, nice and easy. No hit, no body, take care of the brakes. Let's get on down to lap 450, Mark, before we get after it. Is it a brand new track when you go out there, Rusty, after the rain? Not really. It's uh, The track stays pretty consistent. The only thing that messes it up, like that last five laps before the red flag, is it's starting to get pretty slippery. A lot of guys passing on the high side here. Yeah, I was very surprised to see that. You know, in fact, I went up there and passed a lot of cars up there. I saw Gordon go up there first. I said, hey, maybe it came in. I, I tend to try to let somebody else try the treacherous part before I do it. Once I found it was okay, I went there. Rusty Wallace, he's the leader. Let's go right next door to the doctor. Well, DW, you and Rusty had a little discussion a moment ago about uh, the, the contact you guys met uh, rather abruptly on the racetrack. What, what was the discussion about? Well, he, he decided that, that we were going to cruise a while. Well, he didn't. He just decided that all at once. You know, we were going to log some laps. I've been racing pretty hard, wanting to get back in front of him before the rain came. And he rolled in there, and normally he'd pick the throttle up. He didn't pick it up that time, so I helped him a little bit. And uh, Everything worked out all right. So I told him, I said, it's too early for me to make you mad, so I ain't going to make you mad right now. <laughs> no, he put his hand out the window and waved to you. Yeah, right. Uh, that's like an open invitation. Come on up here. I want to show you something. <laughs> Car running awfully well. you got to be awfully pleased. It is, and, uh, you know, the Western Auto team is, I'm telling you, if we hadn't got off to such a shaky start this year, we'd be a contender for the championship, and we may be yet. It's a long way to go. But we'll win some races, and I just want to say hi to everybody in Oklahoma. I just want everybody in Oklahoma to know that we're thinking about you. We got kids, we got families, and that's what this sport is all about. And we're real sad about what happened in Oklahoma. And uh, I just hope it, uh, I hope everything turns out good for those people. And say hi to Ronnie Hopkins' family who passed away. Darrell Walter current running, currently running second. Let's go to John Kernan. Well, Mark Martin currently stands third as uh, we stand outside the car. I know you'd rather be out there racing on the track, but the uh, car seems to be running really well for you. Yeah, I'm real proud of this, uh, this group, this car. Uh, we don't really run that good here, even though we've won here. Uh, strange things do happen from time to time. Uh, we've got an awesome race car here today, and I'm proud of that Valvoline Cummins Ford, the team. If we can keep it going, you know, we may have a shot. We've got a couple of adjustments to make, and uh, if it works, you know, we'll have a shot. So now this gives you a little time. You don't have to discuss these adjustments over the uh, radio with uh, Steve. So this little break maybe uh, maybe will help you dial it in better, huh? Well, we had it already figured out what we were going to do before the caution even came out. So this isn't doing anybody any good. So that's why you're able to stand here in the rain uh, with me for about five minutes, right? Yeah, that's uh, you got nothing else to do today. All right. Thank you, Mark. Mark Martin waiting for the rain to end here at Martinsville. He is currently running in third position. We have uh, a good interview with Dale Earnhardt coming up on the Shop Talk, which will be coming up later in the afternoon. We're going to wait things out here for a few more minutes, though. Although the track is very wet, it is still raining, and track drying operations continue in the rain delay for the Haynes 500. We'll be right back. Speed World coverage of the Haynes 500 is being brought to you by Firestone, America's tire since 1900. By McDonald's, have you had your break today? And by NASCAR 94 Year in Review. To order, call 871 NASCAR. It is wet still here in Martinsville. Rain continues to come down. The trucks are out there. Here is the Auto Light Field summary showing you where. The cars are lined up. There are 183 laps completed. We are 67 away from the halfway point. Now, here's what we're going to do. We're going to go to Shop Talk here in just a few minutes, but please don't turn away because we will be back here during the uh, commercial breaks of Shop Talk to have live interviews and to update you on the weather conditions. We are not going away until something has been decided or we complete the race. There are two shop talks coming up with Dale Earnhardt. One of them coming up here in just a moment. The other one will be after Talladega. Real good interview with the seven-time NASCAR Winston Cup champion and also an opportunity to buy some paraphernalia and souvenirs. So let's go now to shop talk, but stay with us. 
Back with more Shop Talk in a moment. We are live at Martinsville Speedway where it continues to pour down rain. In fact, it's raining about as hard as it has all day long. Next week, we hope for better weather. We'll certainly be at a different racetrack from the smallest racetrack here at Martinsville to the longest and the fastest. The Talladega Super Speedway and the Winston Select 500 live next Sunday afternoon at 1 o'clock. And certainly one of the favorites for that uh, race and anywhere for that matter, Jeff Gordon. Here's Jerry. Indeed, Bob, after winning three times already this year, he has to be a favorite going to Talladega. And Jeff, uh, but today, let's talk about today first. Uh, a great run from 12 spot toward the front early on. Uh, the car was hooked up on the outside there early, and uh, the bottom groove just took a while for it to come in, and everybody was slipping, sliding around the bottom, so I said, heck, let's try to go up top and see what's up there, and, and uh, I couldn't believe it. All of a sudden, we started shooting by all these cars and got up to the front and started running Daryl down, and, you know, I knew we had a great car. I mean, yesterday in practice, the car was, was really good, and, uh, you know, then all of a sudden after that first stop, for some reason, the car started falling off. Uh, we've noticed that the, the left side's a little bit lower than when we started. We had a problem with getting the jack underneath the left side on that last pit stop, and we're, we're wondering what's going on. So we're, we're kind of scrambling right now and kind of glad that uh, we, we've got a red flag here. Can you believe the year you're having so far? I mean, everyone's talking about you, particularly Dale Earnhardt, who a couple of years ago said, watch this kid. He is going to be incredible. I think Earnhardt was right. Well, coming from him, that means an awful lot. But, uh, you know, I mean, I still got to gotta credit a, a lot of people. I mean, all along my whole career, I, I've been, you know, really blessed to be with good people. And they put me in great race cars. And, you know, I'm, I'm just very lucky to still be able to say that all the way up in this league uh, of Winston Cup. I mean, Ray and, and these guys on this DuPont crew are building some great race cars, some good engines. And, you know, I'm just fortunate to be able to go out there and show my ability. Success and humility. Can you believe it, folks? All in one package with Jeff Gordon. Let's go to John Kernan. Well, Jerry, when you talked to Kyle Petty at the beginning of the race, uh, said he was feeling pretty good. And Kyle, sitting back there watching TV, uh, you look like you're in pretty good shape right now. Yeah, you can be in pretty good shape when you have a halftime in the middle of the, <laughs> of the race. It works that way. I mean, we only run 150 or 60 laps, and it's really cool. And, uh, you know, the car's working pretty good, so you're not having... Uh, to struggle too bad, so everything's working good. No, it doesn't look like uh, you're struggling at all. It looks like you're running pretty well. Yeah, really good. The car was a little bit loose when we first started. We did some stuff with some air pressure and stuff, and the, and the car was just, it took off good, and it run good for 10 or 15 laps, and then it kind of fell off, and we've adjusted. And this last run, we were really, really good. So, uh, you know, I hated to see the rain come. Well, they've got a satellite dish hooked up to the television in here, and they've been, they were watching ESPN, and when I walked in, the first thing Kyle said to me is, Hey, can you talk to Benny? And uh, Benny's on the headset now, Kyle, so I'm going to let you talk to Benny, okay? Okay, man. You want me to tell him right yeah, now? Tell him right <laughs> now? Benny, here's the deal. What's now, the deal? Now, listen good. I, I was watching the interview with uh, Ned and, and Peekaboo and um, Bob and yourself. Get behind the table, Benny. Don't sit to the right of the table. Let me tell you something. All that buffet stuff is showing. Get behind the table next time you do an interview, please. Like okay, this? Man? Oh, he can't see now, can he? No, he can't see now. He's going to go in. Maybe Move over, guys. That. <laughs> Man, that's a lot to get behind the... Uh... <laughs> Those guys are rough on me, aren't they? Well, Man. Deserving. <laughs> I'm afraid of it. You know, Kyle Petty still sounds like he's a little plugged up. Didn't you, didn't you think that he sounds like he still is having after effects of that uh, flu that he had? Yeah, maybe, but it certainly doesn't look like it on the racetrack. No, no I think he's, well. he's getting more chipper every day. I, I think he's going to be okay. Yep. Thank goodness. Well, it's still raining, folks, so uh, just stay with us, and we'll be back occasionally to update you on what's going on here. In the meantime, we bring, take you back to more Shop Talk featuring Dale Earnhardt. And make sure their feet are nice and dry so they don't slip off the pedals on the restarts. They're cleaning the windshields, trying to get these drivers back aboard the race cars and hope they can get this racetrack dry and possibly get back to some green flag action in the Haynes 500, Bob. Well, we're going to stand by here and continue to bring you all the updates. And uh, when they go back green, we will be there for it. We're going to take you back now to the Haynes 150 Slim Jim also all pro race. It was held here yesterday. We may miss some of the yellow laps that the cars are going to have here today, but we won't miss any green. You know, it's a shame we couldn't get somebody. It's terrible. That like a monkey in a cage. Uh, 
let's go Ryson. at the Martinsville Speedway where the cars are going back out onto the racetrack. Now they're going to complete uh, many laps here to try to get the track drier than it is right now. It isn't raining, hasn't rained for a while, and hopefully we can get a lot of laps in here before darkness sets in. Let's show you the running order, how they are at the end of 184 laps now. These laps under caution do count. And we see just 13 cars on the lead lap. That's uncommon for 184 laps into the race. But Bobby Labonte, pole sitter, Sterling Marlin also some cause some accident problems. And many of them got caught up back there. And Darrell Walter was running so fast to turn to this race, he put a lot of cars uh, down a lap. Ricky Rudd had that malfunction in the pits. Dale Earnhardt, 22 laps down in 30th position. Two cars are out of the race, Jeff Bodine and Terry Labonte. Dr. Punts, what's the strategy now with uh, maybe an hour or two of darkness? Uh, that is light remaining here today. Bob, a lot of questions being answered down here in some of the different pits. Uh, Rusty Wallace has talked to his crew and said, well, you know, hey, guys, when the pits are open, which will be about a lap and a half or two from right now, we're going to come down and make a pit stop. He said, guys, there's got to be a great pit stop. It may be our last stop of the day. Now, behind me here in the Darrell Walker pit, they're trying to make a decision. Do they come? If Rusty comes, they probably will. Or should they stay out? And they are still concerned about some moisture in the area. You know, whether the rains will come back and whether Darrell Walter can stay out there possibly and get to halfway and then get a possibly a completed race. We'll find out in a few moments. Let's check in with Bill Weber. Well, Doctor, back here on the backstretch, the Family Channel board of Ted Musgrave can wait and see what those leaders do. I asked Howard Comstock what his choices were. Did he want to go back to racing? Did he want to wait for tomorrow? He said, right now, I wish it hadn't rained. But they can wait and see what those front runners do. If the three cars in front of them pit, they may stay out on the track, depending on what the weather and what those guys do. We'll have to wait and see. Back over here on the front stretch, Dale Jarrett running in seventh position, pitted right next to Rusty Wallace. Rusty's guys are ready for him to fit. They were concerned to air pressure in the tires. Of course, uh, they want to get four fresh tires on the car. The work continues out trying, as you see Rusty's crew out with towels, trying to dry the water from the pit area. Dale Jarrett's crew, they will watch and see what Rusty Wallace does. If Rusty comes in, they might also come in and take on four tires. All right, so a lot of questions being asked down in the pit area how to play the strategy here with the cars under caution and 188 laps completed. They're running around here in a pretty good clip, Bob, so they it have a good drying effect on this track. These laps are counting now, but they are not under green. We're going to send you back to the Haynes 150 Slim Jim All Pro race that was held here yesterday uh, while they are under caution here. When and if they should go green, we will be back. Well, oh, you're going to hit it just right. We're not going to see the end of the All Pro race, though, are we? Yeah. <laughs> no green, no green, no green, no green, no green.
Martinsville Speedway in Virginia and the cars are on the track two by two now we thought we were going to get a green flag but nope the yellow remains out the track is still just a little bit wet however we have had a change in how they're running on the racetrack because NASCAR opened the pits and allowed everybody to come in and this is how that went. Here we see the cars coming off turn four and down pit road Rusty Wallace and look Ned Darrell Waltrip did not come in he stayed out stayed on the racetrack and I believe everybody else on the lead lap did stay out there I mean did come into the pits excepting Darrell and we see the 24 car Jeff Gordon up there working on that car Rusty Wallace comes around to the left side and you'll see Bill Elliott coming into the pits and in front of Rusty Wallace the 24 car Jeff Gordon drove back out he only changed two right sides. Rusty Wallace also in. There is Wallace moving down, but as you can see, Gordon won the race out of pit road. Then came Rusty, then Kyle, Mark, Schrader, and Jared. Musgrave is in front of Mark because he pitted on the back straight and once again had that great pit stop. So Daryl Waltrip did not come in. He chose to stay out on the racetrack. Benny? Darrell Walter, this is Benny Parsons of ESPN. What's this all about, buddy? Well, Ben, I don't know. Uh, the track's really not good for the guys. You know, it's got one lane right now, and that's good for, you know, us. We're out here in the first drive, but uh, I don't know. I feel real a little edgy going into first turn here with somebody underneath it. How come you decide to stay out there? Just taking a gamble? See how we could go too much further. Darkness is going to set in before too long. Our car is pretty good on old tires, and uh, we just thought we'd rather be in the front and not have to dodge any bullets if we can help it. Well, good luck to you. And let's go to Dr. Jerry Punch. As you're looking at Dale Earnhardt's good race Chevrolet, what's left of that uh, Chevrolet Monte Carlo? Now, Earnhardt has agreed. He told NASCAR he would be the rabbit. He said, hey, I can't hurt this car too much more, I don't think. So he has agreed, and he is some 21 or two laps down, being shown in 31st spot. So he's the guy in 30th place, we should say, from scoring right now that will go and turn it up and uh, see how the track is doing to let the leaders of the cars on the lead lap know exactly if it is safe at race speeds. So we are still not ready to go racing yet. The track is drying, but it isn't ready for racing conditions at the moment. So we're going to send you back to the finish of yesterday's Haynes 150 All-Pro Race in just a moment. The turns are getting in pretty good shape here, Bob, but the straightaways are what are not drying. They, there is zero banking on the straightaways, and so that makes a big difference. And so Daryl Waltrip now has a lead with Jeff Gordon, Rusty Wallace, Kyle Petty, and Ted Musgrave. And Dale Earnhardt is doing the test, as you can see, trying to run at racing speed to see how good the track is. Back to yesterday's Haynes 150 here at Martinsville. Live at Martinsville, you saw Rick Crawford win here yesterday in a thrilling race, and now the drivers are being given the signal. One more lap to go, and we are going to be racing. Here's John Kernan. Jeff Gordon running in second right now. Took on only right side tires, but talking with Ray Evernham, they may have a problem with the left front. He thinks they might have a bad spring or possibly the jack bolt on the left front might have been turning. They noticed a problem in handling before the rain delay. Well, let's see how things go here. The pace car is off the track. The green flag is waving. Walker said he didn't want somebody down on the inside of him going into that turn. He took care of that and got right out front there so there wouldn't be anybody down on the inside of him going into the turn. Gordon Wallace set chase. That's Brett Bodine on the inside. He's a lap down. 14th position. Rusty Wallace in the two car that Miller Junior Draft Ford has been the dominant car all afternoon. On top of Mark Mark car, this is a sixth place car going by Sterling Marlin, who's a lap down. Back to the lead, Darrell Walton, Western Auto Chevrolet, 17, the leader. He's now led 128 of the first 220 laps. And Rusty trying to get underneath the 24 car of Jeff Gordon. That's Rusty in the black number two. 
second place away from Jeff, and he may be able to do so here. Gordon gets up high, resting to the inside, but you remember how Jeff's car worked so well up high in the race before we had the rain. Right now, he only has right side tires that are new. New tires do make a difference here, not as big a difference as they make in most race tracks. And Kyle Petty's been able to get by Musgrave. Let's call it fourth. Well, I said he was, but uh, he's great. trying to. Musgrave trying to come back on the oh. outside. Oh, and I don't think Kyle knew he was out there. They bumped. Musgrave bites back on the outside. Outside. As Kyle Spotter the 16 was on the outside. Mark Martin closes up on the back bumper's team, and these cars getting all jammed up behind Daryl Waltrip. Daryl decided not to stop, did not change tires, and his car just a little bit slower than these other cars. You can see about 15 cars nose to tail. Rusty has four. I think Rusty has the faster race car, but it's tough to pass on this race car. Under normal conditions and with the track uh, wet in spots, it's even more difficult. You know, the second groove is not in bad shape. Bobby Labonte is passing. Bobby Labonte is passing cars on the outside like crazy. He is a lap down. But that second groove is not doing too bad. There he is now, Bobby Labonte. He's gotten back in line, but he just passed Mark Martin on the outside. He passed Tim Schrader on the outside. He passed Kurt Marlin on the outside. Here he is, trying to make another move out there. His car is working good out there. He's a lap down in 16th. Dale Jarrett trying to take a position from Ken Schrader. And those two were racing together before. Oh, exactly. contact. They were racing together before we had the red, and they're racing together as we resume. This is the battle for seventh position. And the 33 guard, Robert Press, is still in a lead lap after 229 laps, 230 laps. Now he's trying to move on the inside of Ken Schrader. It looks like we're going to get this race in today. I don't know that we'll, that we'll run 500 laps, but we will have an official race at the end of the day. Just 20 more laps to go. That's 231 completed. And if we reach 251, that will be a completed race, or at least uh, in terms of legality. Walker depends on Pontiac, the camera on the roof of his car as he closes up right on the back bumper of Robert Preston. Rusty still working on Jeff Gordon. Now Rusty wow. looking outside. Nope. I saw some sparks while that two, two car going down in the corner. I thought I saw it off the 28 car. Just a second. Here's Rusty now. Again challenging. He may have second place this time. Well, I think that move on the outside got a good run and made it on the inside. Didn't see any sparks that time. Rusty is in second, Walter the leader. Rusty is wanting to get back to the front. He has 21 top five finishes in his last 22 short track races. Wow. He has been amazing. And he's the only driver to pro 
those three top five finishes in the first three short track races this season. And Rusty, as you said, he wants to get to the front, but right now it's imperative that he gets to the front because who knows how long this race is going to last as it closes up right on the back bumper of Darrell Walker. Once again on the outside. Oh, is there some sparks? And Russell's car is bottoming on the outside. Here he's on the outside of Darrell. He might have it. Boy, he got a great run off the second corner, and Rusty Wallace takes the lead. Thirteen laps from an official race. So it's Wallace at the front now with Waltrip Gordon. Kyle Petty and Ted Musgrave challenging. Racetrack. Mark Martin to the outside of Kyle Petty in a battle for fifth. Now Ted Musgrave just took fourth from Kyle, and now Mark goes to fifth. Kyle is back to sixth. Bobby Lamonte coming up there, but he is a lap down. And there we see the four and the 18. Both those cars are a lap down, racing four position. Now the 28 car, Dale Jarrett joins that battle. He's been trying to get by starting on him for about 10 laps. He might have it this time. I don't know. He's been running up there. Decided he might, might have the run he needs this time. Dale Jarrett can get by these two. He is in front of them position-wise, but having some difficult getting around and he is racing with the 42 car, Kyle Petty, for position. And we saw just behind that, the 25 car, Ken Schrader, has caught up with him as he battles with the 4 and 18. And Bobby Hamill is right there also. Here's John Kirkham with an update on Kyle Petty. Bob, as we see Kyle lose a couple of positions out there on the racetrack, he's radio and has told the crew that the car has gotten very, very loose. And their only hope is either a caution to come out, they can come in and tighten it up, or this race goes up will they'll have another pit stop to make a chassis adjustment. Kyle is 
struggling at the moment. Next time, this time around, we reach the halfway point. Here's a battle for second, Waltrip and Gordon. There's the halfway point. $10,000 to Rusty Wallace for leading at the halfway point from Gatorade. And now next time around, it will be an official race. I don't know if uh, there's five or six cars that aren't eligible for the Gatorade money. I don't know if Rusty Wallace is one of those or not. If he's not, then Darrell Walker would get the $10,000 if he, in fact, is eligible. Some of the guys choose not to run the decals on that. But there is a $10,000 award from Gatorade that someone's going to get. Right. There goes Jeff, Jeff Gordon. Gordon to the outside of Darrell. Gets him. Gordon running awfully well for just changing two tires. Of course, Darrell didn't change any. And he's running, running very well, too. Yes. Let's take a look now at our Budweiser race recap. Rusty Wallace has been in front 78 of the 249 laps. Five lead changes, four cautions, 67 laps. An average speed of 68.651. And, of course, we did have a long rain delay in the middle and we were late in getting the race started. Wallace has been, or rather Waltrip has led the most laps so far and Robert Presley has led 25. And Bobby Hamilton in the 43 car gets by Kenny Schrader. 25 takes that spot away. That was for eight. for the eighth position. Right up in front of them as we see well this is a tight battle here. That's those two lap cars there. And Dale Jarrett, as you said, ran in right in front of those cars, trying to pass Kyle Petty. We've seen that battle before today. There they go. Jarrett to the inside. Kyle says his car is loose. The Kyle's been fighting that problem all day long. We saw earlier in the race. When the race first started, the Kyle Petty was having some problems getting off the corner, losing it back in. Now Jarrett moves to sixth.
he is not the fastest on the track he's very close. He's going to try the outside now. Got him around there coming off of that turn. Daryl Spotter I'm sure told him that hey he's got a nose up there because Daryl would have went out and wrecked both of them coming off of that turn. So now he dives deep into turn three. He's going to get the position. And here comes Mark Martin. He'll move up there and do the same thing. So Daryl Walker continues to lose positions. As Daryl said it was a gamble not knowing how long they'd be able to run before it got dark. Back behind them Ken Schrader just went around Kyle Petty on the outside and has taken over the seventh position. in front of the Haynes 500. Jeff Gordon running second. And here is Rusty Wallace putting a lap on the number 90 car of Mike Wallace. He is five laps down in 28th position. Gordon second. Musgrave third. Then Mark Martin and Daryl Walter. We'll be right back. between the 24 and 2. I'm not sure that 24 car ain't gaining. Okay. I think Rusty's cooling it right now. Don't look to me like that 24 car. at Martinsville. We are riding with our leader, Rusty Wallace, whose lead is shrinking because Jeff Gordon and Ted Musgrave are both catching up to him. Looks like both of those cars are gaining just to take on Rusty Wallace. And during the break, I was told Rusty Wallace is not eligible for the Gatorade money. Uh, so Daryl Walker, old D.W. walked off with another 10,000 today. Yep. He'll make his owner awfully proud of him when he goes in tomorrow. There's third place Ted Musgrave. Rusty, because he is leading here today, has now led at least one lap in all four short track races held this year. 1.2 seconds separate first and second. Wallace and Gordon. I think Rusty might have just been cooling it just a moment ago because it looks like right now that he's pulling away from the 24 car. John, what's the deal? Well, 
I just talked to Robin Pemberton, and he said, yeah, Rusty's just been kind of cool with it. You know, the track conditions are not ideal. They don't want to make a mistake, don't want to crash the car. Rusty was just taking it kind of easy. But just a moment ago, uh, they showed the interval to Robin. He got on the radio. I believe he told Rusty, just kind of close it in. You might want to pick it up a little bit. <laughs> You saw Dale Earnhardt go another lap down. He's still back in 30th position. Yeah, 1.9, 7 yeah. tenths of a second just in a couple of laps. Here's a battle for position between Kyle Petty and Robert Presley for ninth. Car just getting so loose, he just can't race these fellas. We see that his tachometer has a line in it. Walter continues to slide back. He's now seventh. That was Ken Schrader who just passed him. So Walter's gamble did not pay off. Nope. Was, uh, you know, just tires, you know, five hundredths of a second maybe when they're pretty new, and then ten hundredths of a second a lap, and more before long, it really catches up to you. Jerry, what's the story on Darrell Waltrip? Well, Darrell took a calculated risk. He said right when the, when the uh, red flag came out, his car had gotten very tight in the turn. But when the rains came and washed the rubber off the track, the track was very loose in the beginning. His car ran awfully well, so he opted not to come in and pit. He is currently being shown now in seventh place. Now, the big concern in the Western Auto Pits is how far can he go on fuel and by their calculations he'll have to fit sometime in the next 22 to 25 laps where Rusty and the rest are 70 laps or so before they'll need another stop. Bob? So it could hurt him even more if uh, we don't get a caution between now and then. Yep. Here's yes. Bill Elliott and Jeremy Mayfield with Dick Trickle, rather uh, Dave Marcus, Lake Speed, and Ward Burton. But the two battling for position are Bill Elliott and Jeremy Mayfield. They're battling for 12th and 13th. Elliott has the 12th position. Jeremy Mayfield in the RCA car number 98 is 13th. And here comes Rusty Wallace about to put a lap on. Rusty has a lot of traffic to go through, and that could mean that Rusty and Musgrave will be able to close in on him. So they're going to have to go through that traffic, too. Right. It all depends on how they catch it. Rusty Walsh's car, when he goes on the outside down in turn one, the right rear bottoms out fairly significant. Now he closes up on the back bumper of Lake Speed. Mayfield is a lap down. 12 cars now on the lead lap. Through that, through that same traffic. He's got two cars side by side there, Morgan Shepard and Mayfield. Now he gets on the inside of Mayfield, car number 98. Rusty Wallace been able to get by at late speed, but now he has Ward Burton in front of him. Ward moves over, lets Rusty go ahead. Morgan moves over to let Jeff Gordon go by. Rusty and Ward. I think maybe they had some contact down there. Rusty now to the outside of Dave Marcus. And that's Dick Trickle in the 15, the Ford quality quad care car, who was involved in that fifth lap action with uh, Terry Labonte, Dale Earnhardt, and a host of others. Yes. Well, Rusty has been able to clear a lot of that traffic now, but Jeff has five more cars to go around. The next car that Rusty Wallace will be lapping his Bill Elliott. And boy, that's a big sigh of relief for Rusty and his crew. They got through that. Of course, he's got some other traffic in front of him, but right now it's, it's much clearer than Jeff Gordon has. There we see the 16 and 6 teammates, but they're racing for position right now, racing for that third spot. You see how dark it's getting. The lights are very visible. And Walter is slowing further. Is he out of gas? Could be. Could be, but... Jerry, what's the story? Apparently, the calculations were not correct. Daryl Radio said it's sputtering. I think we're out of gas, and so he will come down pit road under the green, and they will change 
two right side tires only under this green flag pit stop and fill it up with fuel. What a tough break for an 11-time winner here at Martinville Speedway. The Western Auto Park comes in. It is sputtering, not running very well. And now they put the fuel cans in, change right side tires. What a tough break for DW. Well, that's a rare miscalculation for, for he and, and his crew. You know, he, he's told us on the road, told Benny on the radio, said, well, don't think this thing can go green too long. It'll get dark. Well, it didn't get dark. I don't think anybody expected it to run this far green as the way that the track was. Right. I think they all thought that, you know, we'll have some cautions, take eat up some time, but it hasn't done that. Everybody's driven very carefully out there. We've gone a long time now without, well, in fact, we haven't had a caution since the green was waved again. Yep. We see that Rusty Wallace has put Joe Nemechek in the 87, the Burger King car, and Bill Elliott in the McDonald's car, both a lap down. Now just nine cars remain on the lead lap, and the last car on the lead lap is Kyle Petty, who isn't too far ahead of Rusty Wallace. He has uh, Elvis Sawyer between them. And then we see Bill Elliott on the inside of Joe Nemechek. That's fourth position, uh, ten. 10th spot. Darrell Walker went a lap down. He's not far out in front of Rusty Wallace, almost two laps down, but he's uh, technically. Oh, he's oh, got a spin. But is there a caution? Yes, there's going to yeah, be a caution we'll now. Yeah. And Rusty and Bill Elliott are trying to race back to the line, and I think that Rusty won the race. Rusty was almost involved in that. He a was. really close call for Rusty. And what a tough break for Darrell Walker. What, just five yep. more laps? Yep. yep, that's right. The caution comes out on lap 296. Okay, now, do the leaders yeah. fit? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Here, Here they come. This is coming in. Yep. Yeah, they're not going to stay out there and uh, take a chance like uh, Darrell did. Jeff Gordon's in. We see Mark Martin still driving down to his pit in a triple split. Cleaning the windshields on these cars. Right, right side are on. Clean on the right side. Here's John Curtin. A problem with the leverage on the left front tire. They got a little bit broke. They had to change it. So now it's thrown a, a kink into Rusty's tire change. Four tires. He's down in the way. But Jeff Gordon will beat him out. 24.6, 21.4 for Jeff Gordon. Mark Martin is still in as they head down. 21 and a half for Mark Martin as Jeff Gordon beat him out. Won the race off the pit road. Gordon turning in the best pit stop by just a tenth of a second by Mark Martin. Well, let's show you what happened to cause the caution. Some contact between Ricky Craven in the 41 car and Robert Presley. Presley goes around, he nails the gas, tries to do a 360, he goes up and smacks the outside wall instead. And Rusty was very lucky. He had Elton Sawyer right beside him, but somehow got through unscathed. Here we see it again as Presley gets tapped from the rear by Ricky Craven, both of those rookie drivers this year. Here's John Kernan. Well, the lug wrench did not break. Actually, you can see the problem right here on that left front, the left side tires, a jammed lug nut. What is this? The second time we've seen that happen today, probably about the third or fourth time we've seen it in the last few weeks. Cost Rusty probably six and a half, seven seconds here in the pits. Allowing him, uh, well, what do we have? Whoa, a gas can, a catch can, a catch can of the 43 car. And I saw him dragging his crewman down pit road, and the guy finally let go, but evidently he was trying to catch that catch can. Under caution here at Martinsville in the Haynes 500. We'll take a break and be right back. Three cars, uh, black flag. Where is that? <clears throat> okay. Hmm. They black flag the fourth.
back up about two inches there, boob. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Hey, guys, mm -hmm. remember I told you about the, the problem with the left front on Jeff Gordon's car? This last pit stop, they had to lift up the left side to get the jack under it. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I mean, you'd know more about what that's... That's making the car tight. Yeah, yeah. What, what I'm wondering, though, is, I mean, if they're having to lift it up, you know where they take the little measurement for the front air dam? Yeah. See what I'm saying? Uh huh. I don't know about that. Okay. Right now, though, they're they're trying to convince NASCAR that it's too dark and they would like to have rain. Though. <laughs> too what? Too dark. And they'd like to have rain yeah. right now too. <laughs> the 2014. Okay. Even between us and baseball, huh? What'd you say, Chevy? Three hundred two laps completed in the Haynes 500 at Martinsville Speedway in Virginia. We are under caution because of a spin down in turn four involving Robert Presley and others and Rusty drove through it and just barely got through without any damage. Here it is from his in-car camera. See nothing. No, he couldn't. He didn't know for a little bit whether he was going to eat anything or not. He had no idea whether he had made the right move. Presley's tires that they had to drive through. Presley had his foot on the gas, trying to do that 360 without hitting the wall, and boy, it did create a lot of smoke. It's just about 7 o'clock Eastern Time, and for those of you tuning in for Sports Center, we will have it on right after the conclusion of this race. Now, we've got a little less than 200 laps to go. Needless to say, we are not going to get the entire 500 lap distance in. We're going to run a few more, though, and the green flag is about to come out with Jeff Gordon, Rusty Wallace, Mark Martin, Ted Musgrave, and Dale Jarrett, the top five. And Darrell Waltrip trying to get his lap back. He's down on the inside. He's had one of the fastest cars here today when he was equal with them as far as tires are concerned, and now he is. Let's see if he can get his lap back. Right now, Rusty Wallace has to pick one of them. Which one is he going to pick? Is he going to bet on Darrell Waltrip? He is right now. He said, okay, Darrell's going to beat Jeff. I'm going to follow him. Wallace pulls to the inside of Gordon. Waltrip has his lap back. Jeff with just an inch or two lead over Wallace at the line. Darrell needs a caution now for it to do a whole lot of good. A tremendous battle for the lead. Rusty is in the lead now. But Jeff Gordon led this race, so that means he's led every Winston Cup race this year in that 24 car. Quite a remarkable beginning of the season for Jeff Gordon. And Rusty Wallace already pulled Farley from Jeff Gordon. Mark Martin right back there in third place. The battle league car is in third place.
that. Now everybody is giving it everything that they possibly have now. We've only got to worry about the brakes lasting another, another 40 or 50 laps, not 500 laps now. With 188 laps to go, here's a Fram field summary. Nine cars on the lead lap. And Ricky Rudd spins coming off a of turn four. And Sterling Marlin spins behind him. Waltrip is apparently going to get his lap back if he can maneuver his way through the two spun cars sitting just off of turn number four. And he will indeed get the lap back. And there he is. Big break. Break he needed. Let's watch again. There's Ricky Rudd, the 10 car, the tight ride. That's what who's going to some contact with the 16 car. Around goes Ricky Rudd. Now that's number 10. Looks like 11, but he's wiped out part of the 10. And we see Sterling Marlin, as Bob said, spin behind them. Rudd is not on the lead lap. He's a lap down in 10th position. He's now two laps down. Right. Or maybe three yeah, right now. Go, yeah. About to go to the third lap down. That's right. Apparently couldn't get the car, car fired. So the field once again is under caution because of a spin. Daryl Waltrip has his lap back now in ninth position, and he will probably come in, don't you think, and get some fresh yeah, tires? He has nothing to lose. Nothing to lose, right? nothing to lose really. Well, he stayed yeah, out he there, stayed though. Out. But uh, he really would have nothing to lose other than uh, the cost of a set of tires. That's which right. he's the owner, so maybe that makes a difference. <laughs> that could be. <laughs> Ricky Rudd finally has his car moving, going in the right direction. He's headed towards pits. Yeah, you can see the left side of his zero is totally torn away, so the car looks like number 11. And we see the jacking the car up, so evidently, whatever problem he had that he sit there so long, the transmission is uh, like it's jammed in gear or something. It can... Here's Jerry Punch. As we wait on Darrell Waltrip to come down pit road, Ricky Rudd's car is stuck in first gear. That's why they were jacking the car up and trying to get underneath it to get it out of first gear and get it into fourth gear. Meanwhile, here is Darrell Waltrip in the pits. Watch Chevrolet. Now, having gotten his lap back, he will get fresh right side tires. They will not make a left side tire change. No chassis adjustments. Right side tires. And he's ready to go for the final whatever 40 or 50 laps they predict down here in the pits, Bob. Okay, so we have another contender getting his lap back, and this is how it all developed. Ricky Rudd gets tapped from the rear by Ted Musgrave. Spinning around. Sterling Marlin also spinning around. The caution comes out, and Waltrip gets his lap back. And we'll be right back. Yes, he is. Probably get those left side, left side tires. Get left sides now. Yeah. yeah. Okay. One to go. One to go. One to go. Yeah. Okay. He's trying to fix his helmet. See, he's jamming his helmet. He's trying to do whatever. Mm -hmm.
less than a half a lap has been run under green Wallace continues up front behind him Gordon Mark Martin Ted Musgrave and Dale Jarrett a reminder once again that Sports Center will be up next at the conclusion of this race it's up to NASCAR now to decide when it gets too dark to call it we've still got 180 laps left in the race. There comes Darrell Walter right behind Kyle Petty. Yeah. Fresh tires. And Kyle Petty also came in and got four fresh tires during this caution. So we'll see where that leaves both of them. It leaves them in a bunch of traffic for one thing. <laughs> Don't know if they'll be able to use those tires to good advantage and be able to work up towards the front. Brett Bodine isn't having a bad run here today, is he? He's no, he's having a good position. run. He, the only reason Ten. he's a lap down is the fact that he had an unscheduled pit stop. He got a fender knocked in on a tire way back early in the race. But other than that, he is running uh, very well. Mm -hmm. There are Petty and Waltrip battling for position. Daryl to the inside of Kyle. to eighth position. Ted Musgrave, meanwhile, moves to third, passing his teammate Mark Martin. Yeah, Mark just let him go once he got uh, got a nose up there and said, uh, okay, go ahead, buddy. You might have a faster race car than me. All right, Jerry, what have you learned regarding how much longer we may go in this event? We have just been told that NASCAR is going to give the teams a 10 lap warning when they intend to throw the checkered flag in 10 laps. They haven't given that warning yet. As you watch Darrell Walter now making a move inside of Bobby Hamilton, but NASCAR will give the team a 10 lap warning prior to conclusion and throw the checkered flag. Bob. Darrell Waltrip moves to seventh position and comes up on now Ken Schrader. Meanwhile, Ted Mus Musgrave has caught Jeff Gordon. Yes, he has. He is really working on him. Bob, I don't know. Hey, this is a good run coming off the turn. He's got a fender up there. He might be able to make the pass. Musgrave. Wow. Oh, gets a little loose in the corner. Boy, the Fords are trying to come back with a vengeance here today. <laughs> but they sure are. They're first, second, and fourth. Fifth. Fourth and fifth. Yes, yeah, first, second, fourth, and fifth. Only Jeff Gordon is a Chevy in the top five. Now, let's see if Musgrave can do anything with Rusty Wallace. Can he catch that two car? Bill Weber has more on this spectacular run by Musgrave. We'll give more credit to the pick crew once again. Last time, earlier in the race, actually, Ted had been loose, so they tightened up the car. Then it got tight on this last pit stop. They adjust to the track car once again, and Ted continues his charge to the front. And Howard Comstock isn't saying much. He's a very quiet gentleman anyway, but he is smiling and giving a lot of credit to his team and his driver. The family channel Ford is in second position. And Rusty Wallace. He is moving closer. One second separate him now. And we see that Musgrave has driven away from Jeff Gordon. And now Gordon has his hands full of Mark Martin. Yes, he does have. And Dale Jarrett right behind Mark Martin. There's Jarrett in the 28 car. Been a good run for Dale today. I remind you again, if you're tuning in for Sports Center, you will see it at the conclusion of our event. We've had rain on and off all day here. Delayed to start. We have a long rain delay in the middle, and now we've completed just 332 of 500 laps. It will not go the distance. We do not know at this point how long it will go. NASCAR will give the drivers a 10-lap warning to the checkered flag. Wallace leads, Musgrave is second, then Gordon, Martin, Jarrett, Schrader, we see Dale Jarrett went and did some. Did he change an engine this morning? Yeah, they did. The Rocky X team uh, changed engines this morning. They changed yesterday after uh, their morning practice, but uh, they found something this morning they didn't like, so they just said rather, they'd rather be safe than sorry, so they put a different engine in this morning. That's 
not uncommon for the Rock Gates team. No. We've seen them do that over the years where they don't take chances. And... Yeah, they will change, change engines in that car at the drop of a hat. Yes, sir. And Musgrave looks like he's getting a hit, eight tenths of a second. So he's closing in on Rusty Wallace ever so slowly. And we're left 335 right now. I would bet that 350 is the magic number. I would bet 350 laps is going to be the end. You just think another 15 laps? Yes, They've sir. still got a uh, half hour of daylight. Yep. Well, well, here comes Walker, Walker, guys. He has come from back in the pack and is catching the sixth place car of Ken Schrader. Right there with those new tires on, he is on a tear. Here he comes looking to blow oh, by oh. that 25 car. Oh, DW looking good. And coming in on Jared. Well, those tires make a difference, make a world of difference. He found that out. Yeah. In the other way, the hard way he found out. And I didn't even go over there and work on that car this week. He's running so well. <laughs> Just imagine, though, what could have happened had he waited just four or five more laps and caught that caution to make the pit stop. Well, Mark Martin has dropped back a little bit from Jeff Gordon a few laps ago. He was up there working on him, but now he moves in on Jared as Jared moves in on Martin. There's Darrell in sixth place. He last won this race in 1989. He last won here at this racetrack in and the fall here. race of 89. And Musgrave is within three, four car lengths. He's there. He's... And he's to, the, he's to the point that Rusty Wallace knows he's there. Yeah. And that's the most important part. Ted Musgrave's best finish this year has been a third at Darlington. He is looking for his best career finish and he may be in a position to win this thing. That's right. Third is the best he's ever finished in the Winston Cup race. Never has won one, but he's right on the back of Walter Rusty Woods. He does be won by Dale Jarrett. And Waltrip picks off another one. Daryl is up to fifth. We have a spin in the middle of turn three. Uh-oh. And he's right in the middle of the racetrack. Here come the leaders. One goes on the inside, the other on the outside. No caution yet. And they still, Ooh, oh. oh. Boy, he's about to pull right out in front of a bunch of cars. He's going, but no caution. And that cost Musgrave dearly. Oh yeah, he, he backed off and went on the outside. And now he's got to come back and gain all that. Good. Don't know how long he has to do it. They still haven't given that 10 lap mark yet. Rusty goes to the inside of Hut Strickland and puts Strickland between himself and second place Musgrave now. Watch on the right. That's the 40 car right there and Steve Grissom, the 29 car, and just a little bit of a bump from Elton Sawyer in the 27. They were jammed up in the turn, sort of a chain reaction type of a deal. And everybody missed him. But he started to pull away and it was close for some. Man. All right, there now is the interval between first and second as Daryl Waltrip comes to fourth. Man, what a charge Waltrip is making. This kind of reminds you of uh, Daytona and Dale Earnhardt. It's it? just a shame this thing could be five or less. Those Daryl Waltrip could win this thing, Nick. Yes, sir. He's, he's running faster than the leaders right now. But he's got a lot of distance. I'm afraid he's got too much distance to make up now. Yeah. But he's uh, he's got a good chance to get up to third. Almost a full straightaway between Rusty and Walter. Signal now. Ten, Ten to laps go. to go. I missed it by five. Yep. It's going to be like 355 and it's over. We're at 345 right now. Wallace with the lead over Ted Musgrave. Here are Schrader and Jared, and they're still racing with each other. They have nearly all afternoon. Well, Schrader got by Jared when Jared slowed for that uh, spin up there in turns three and four. And now he's trying to get that position back. Jarrett's on the inside of Schrader. Looks like he may 
Tough to get that spin, a crash down in turn three and four. It's some heavy damage to Ward Burns' car, and that will bring the caution flag out. Burton going the wrong way on the racetrack in turn three as Rusty and everybody else comes below him to the caution flag. Pace car out on the racetrack at lap 349. And Rusty Wallace ran another lap. We can see the radiator is broken into the Hardy's Chevrolet. Steve coming out. Well, it closes up the field and means that there isn't the separation between Daryl and uh, Rusty that there was, but can Rusty hold him off? We'll be back for the closing laps in a moment. We pa we passed the uh, second middles. Okay. <laughs> Wait a minute, I gotta find him. Okay. Okay. Do we get the? All right. So we what? We're gonna have a. And. The cars start nose to tail with less than 10 laps to go. The, lead, the lap cars are not a problem. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think they're going to give one to go this time. Which means we'll have what? Two, three, just, just three, two laps to two go? Two laps to go. Two lap shootout. Man. Are we going to get one to go? Nope. Yep, yes, yep, yes, yep, yes, yep, yes, yep. Yes, 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 yes. Kyle Pettis oh, in the look at, look at Ward Burton's brakes. Wow. They're going to put some new tires on Kyle's car. No, they're not going to. They backed out. Okay. How about the game? Yeah, the game's supposed to start 7.30. Isn't it? Here we go. Oh, I'm sorry. The green has just come out. It's a shootout to the finish. Rusty Wallace with a good start. He will get the white flag next time by. He had a great restart. And we see Darrell uh, Walter in third place. I don't think he's it, it'd be two laps to go. Oh, I'm no, sorry. Apparently. Yep. Two to go. ESPN Sports Center coming up in just a moment. Baseball tonight will be seen at midnight tonight. Of course, at 8 o'clock, we have the baseball game coming on. Rusty Wallace comes off of corner number four, looking for the white flag. There's one lap to go. Here's the race, second, third, fourth, Musgrave, Jeff Gordon, and Daryl Walter. And look at Walter put the heat on Jeff Gordon for third. Wallace, meanwhile, is in turn number three. Hit He's Darryl. on the corner. And Rusty Wallace wins. Musgrave, Gordon, Walter, and Mark Martin are the top five. Rusty Wallace wins his third straight here at Martinsville, his fourth win in the last five events at this half-mile facility. Wow. Wallace, the only driver to post four top five finishes in the four spring short track races. And the Chevy win streak is over. Rusty Wallace has won one for the Ford camp. Receiving the congratulations of his pit crew as he comes down the pit road. Headed for victory lane on a very late afternoon, early evening in Martinsville.
here's Dr. Jerry Punch in Victory Lane. Yeah, Rick smile from Rusty. Rusty, congratulations. The Chevrolet one streak is over. Well, thanks a lot. I mean, I really appreciate it. The car really ran great today. I'd like to thank Miller and uh, Fleetwood RVs, Mobile, uh, Bosch, all of them. This Ford really ran great today, and I was real happy with it. I'm I'm taking it easy there, and right there at the end, almost got too easy. I looked at the mirror, and Teddy was right on my rear end, so I had to step it up. The guys, I lost all the radios. They quit working, and, uh, and then I heard Robin say, three to go, and I said, what? I can't believe we're going to end this thing this quick, but... Uh, I really had a real hot ride today. I'd just like to thank everybody. I'd like to thank my car owner, Roger Penske, and congratulate them on the race up at Nazareth today. Great one. We got one down here, too, so it's a great weekend. Roger Penske gets two in one day in IndyCar and Winston Cup stock cars, Bob. All right. Rusty Wallace wins here at Martinsville, and let's take a look at how they finished in this race, which was to, uh, supposed to begin at 12 noon, but it was delayed, and here it is, almost 7.30, and we're just now <laughs> finishing the event. But it was a great race, and Rusty comes out on top. And we see Bobby Labonte spun on the first lap, uh, got a lap down and finished one lap down. Dale Earnhardt was able to move up one position from where he ran most of the race, Ned, so a few but, more points. Yeah, because Ricky Rudd had his problem, and that's the only, only one that he moved up. Uh, from when Ricky had to go behind the wall for so long. And unofficially, Sterling Marlin is now only eight points behind Dale Earnhardt in the quest for the cup standings. There you see only two drivers officially dropped out of this race, and we completed 356 of the 500 when the checkered flag dropped and darkness moved in. Sports Center is coming up in just a moment, so please stay with us. ESPN Speed World presentation of the Haynes 500 has been brought to you by the more than 1,000 AutoZone stores across America. AutoZone, the best parts in auto parts. By Valvoline, the number one choice of America's top mechanics. And by Beachwood Age Budweiser. It's always been true. This Bud's for you. We'll see you next Sunday at 1 o'clock from Talladega. Rusty Wallace here in wins here at Martinsville. This is Bob Jenkins. Now to Sports Center. About. What's that all about? But that about the spin. I thought you remember. Yeah. Go, Bill. Yeah. Uh, they uh, back when we told you that the, the Ted wanted the ten and the eleven out of the way, and they finally moved. And then when before he apparently before he spun them, they. He had said, you know, I'm going to give him a few laps, and then, it's, you know, here we go. And I, I was walking down here, and I saw Bill just blast by, and uh, I, they told me as soon as I got here that apparent, allegedly he punched him, and uh, then I got into a room, and, you know. Boys will be boys. Okay. 15 seconds, huh? The spring short track season coming to a close here today at the half mile at Martinsville Speedway in Virginia, the NASCAR Winston Cup, Haynes 500. We now move ahead in our coverage. <clears throat> yeah. Okay, we're back to racing from the red. Okay, okay. Okay. A long, so we're coming back after the red flag, huh? Okay.
Okay, I got you. Okay. It's been a day of rain, off and on rain, here at Martinsville Speedway. The race was delayed because of rain and also interrupted by rain. This is the final event of the short track season for 1995 as far as the spring is concerned. Now, uh, what was I going to say? I don't have a clue. Huh. I totally lost my train of thought there. I had something that, uh... oh, okay. Okay, here we go again. It has been a day of off and on rain here at Martinsville Speedway in Virginia. The race was delayed, the start of it was delayed because of rain and also interrupted by rain. This is the final event of the spring short track season in the 1995 NASCAR Winston Cup schedule. Rusty Wallace has won three of the last four events here at this half mile facility and is trying for three straight here today. We now resume our coverage after this message. Let me do that again, please. Yes. <clears throat> Okay. It has been a day of off and on rain here at Martinsville Speedway in Virginia. The start of the race was delayed. Be yeah. It has been a day of off and on rain here at Martinsville Speedway in Virginia. The start of the race was delayed because of precipitation and there was an interruption in the middle. This, by the way, is the final short track race of the spring NASCAR Winston Cup season. Rusty Wallace is going for his third consecutive win here. He has won three of the last four events at this half mile facility. We'll rejoin our coverage in just a moment. That's it. Goodbye. What uh, what do we do about hotel rooms? I guess we see uh, Rick, huh? Thanks. Okay, what do we do? 